What's cracking? It's your homie, Lil Mystery. You are now listening to the Emo Brown Podcast, the downest fool in Chula Vista since AC Slater, homie. You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook at Magrito. Find all the Magrito Podcast Network shows over at magrito.net. Ladies and gentlemen and the low lives, thank you for tuning in to the Emo Brown Podcast Metiche Monday, brought to you by the wonderful people where, Caesar Grasshopper. At Grasshopper. GHBuds.com. That is also correct. Home of the three for $12 Emo Brown pre-rolls. No, I just happen to have one here for a little bit later. <laughs> por si algo sucede. Oh, yeah. Y si por leldo no puede. Because your, your dad wouldn't let you smoke it on Saturday. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We'll get into my dad being a fucking hater. But before we get into all that, got Carlos Paez, got Hello, the chef, Leo. got Caesar. We got all the cool people that are normally here and also Eric Casas, because Eric Casas is... <laughs> el, el Dios. ¿Qué onda, muñecos? ¿Cómo estamos? Muy, muy bien. Todo en orden, todo, todo particular. I think since today we're going to be dealing with a little bit of a B-side, a little B-side action. We're going to play a little bit of, you know, I like Crossroads, bro. For me. Do I have approval from the artist who plays music? Oh. It doesn't matter. We're <laughs> going to play it anyway. We're going to fucking play it anyway, bro. If you get an opportunity, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and review us on hmm. Apple and on Spotify. I like it on Spotify because yeah, if you didn't know, stars. if you didn't know, mm. Spotify does have video content of everything we People do. People love that shit, man. Do they? Yeah. I love it. Then the YouTube. Wifey, I, I come home from work and wifey will like be doing whatever she's doing and I see the little phone like right there and she's like watching it. She's like, ah, you said something funny. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't leave that part. And then I was like, what about it's everybody funny, else? That. And I was like, what about everybody else? <laughs> Somebody was there. It's like that's <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm gonna text Crystal for confirmation. <laughs> Pinchy Casas told me last week that I, you do really good as the heel, bro. You do. You're, you're the good villain on the fucking podcast. Ooh, <laughs> I was like, I'm not, not trying to be the villain. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> get into the member roll call before <laughs> before we get canceled. Uh, all right, let's start from the top. CF Caitlin, welcome. All right, Sabrina, Mrs. Dan, you let herself. Lieve. Oh, that's Danny O's lady. Yeah, I yeah. was unaware of that. All right, cool. He, he Drop that dick on us because she paid for the year. You didn't hear him on Saturday? I did not. Oh, no, okay, I did yeah, not. yeah. He was like, oh, my wife has disposable income. Oh, it shows you who actually paid for the year. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then everybody knows I'm poor because I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> With this ten dollar month to month, sir, fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> hey, um, you know what name I don't read on here is Esteban Garcia. Oh, Jr. keep reading. Okay, <laughs> Daniel Conliff, my guy. I appreciate you, Christopher Del Rosario, uh, Yendi. Uh, that's Barbara Lopez. Chris, Playboy Barbara Chris. Go ahead. Where from where? At Otterstown? Is it compa? This fucking uh, El J Clips guy, man. That's like oh, a, shit, my bad. Yeah, my bad. No, that's a dude who cuts them up all nice, makes designs on them and shit. Clip bro. is about to clip some fools this morning, so let's be on our best behavior. Manuel <laughs> de Casas, Art Pacheco, Dallas, Fiola Walk. Whatever that name is, Ramon Nunez, <laughs> what? Eric. No, no. What Fiel- the fuck is happening Fiel- this morning? Kowski. Fiel- How Kowski. much did you guys actually Hold smoke? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, guys. <laughs> Serge one. Like, now I don't sound so <laughs> bad last yeah. week, huh? Chris and Mike. <laughs> Ramon Saldivar, Ruben Quinoes, Matt Diesel, Eddie Zuko. What's Did up, you say dude? Quinoes? It's not quinoa, my dude. It's Quinones. Whoa. <laughs> we'll, deal, we'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later. Pull in, pull in that bicep card on you. Like, it's not yeah. quinoa, fool. <laughs> Get your Portuguese ass out of here. You know, for it. Carlos Jimenez, David Lara. What's up, guy? Greg, Paulina for the people. Where's she, she at? Where's she yeah. at? She at? Cucina. We All right, Ken Yenieves, Antonio Sanchez, Jess, uh, Gerard Goldman. What's up, my guy? I appreciate you and your little white baby named Hudson. Carlos Olorio. That's a pretty Carlos. white baby name. Hudson? We talked about yeah. that. Yeah. But it's Cindy true. I hear it and I'm like, fun anymore. Hudson. Sounds like, like the a river. guy on that show you watched, The Hills. I don't even know that name, bro. You do. That's a man. Well, that's your shit. <laughs> it's got right, it's mm. Javier Brito, a.k.a. Flaco, Carly, Claudia Wucher, West Said, David Shapiro, Victor Almazan, 
Tania Torres. No, no, don't just Tania Torres. Torres. Whispering through that's, that's Plomero's wife, bro. You okay. mean Tanya? That, yeah, Tanya Torres, Tanga, bro. Tanya is a, is a, is a, is a. Is, is what I'm wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> the day you wear underwear, I'll be surprised. Show you. Hey, real shit? I'm wearing underwear today, bro. Yeah, it it's cold. cold, bro. <laughs> it's cold, man. Shit, and you know, I recently manscaped. What's up? Hey, oh, that's no, why you're I'm cold. available. No, I'm, no. <laughs> I'm available, bro. They're not anymore, bro. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Thomas. And now, Alvarez, Reggie Garcia, DJ Reggie. What's up? Ivan Espinosa, Jamie George Sepeda, Jason McClurg. Uh, that's a new one, right? No, no that's Neil red. Hamilton. That's All that right. dude with the red hair. Ah, uh, that's too many of them. Robert Gomez, Alexandria Camacho, David DB Styles, and Clinton Jones. That's it. One page. Woo. All Tom. Woo. Happy birthday to Camille Harrington. I don't know if oh, you read her name. Yeah. Yeah. It was Camille's Happy birthday. Yeah. 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 Don't even touch your fucking guitar, bro. All right, that's not today's not the day for wow. that. No. All right, Camille, God bro. bless Scrooge, Brian Happy Casey, my soul, yes, guys, the Star of Arch Brothers. Happy birthday, Star of Brothers. Happy birthday, Star of Arch Brothers. Happy birthday, Star of <laughs> Happy birthday Camille. Yeah, woo. Steve loves you. Yes. <laughs> the Star Wars brothers, right. they're gone, right? They're no longer in San Diego. You'll be they missed. Oh, shit. Eric Ortega, Tommy Ferres, Ariana Porras, Laverne, Unknown Soldier, a.k.a. the real queen. Reels. And oh, she's the queen of reels. Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna have to fucking explain this to you fucks all day. It's gonna be a Everyone long show. Everyone acknowledge me real quick. Ramiro El Misfit, Sara Shulamay, Squally Montito, Will Holder, Bob Oso, Mark Sanchez, Timmy Gomez, Cisco Hernandez, SDCA Equipment, mm. El Compa George Ricoy, Kula Yoga, Matthew Stephen Ferris, you Fuck are you, a weenie. My mother, Griselda Garcia, called you out and said you are a weenie too. Uh, Amar uh, Compa Nijar, fucking guy. I got a cool text. From uh, <laughs> I got it from Oils eggs. from David Oils, bro. Lieutenant David Oils, the third highest ranking Mexican in Chula Vista now, and he said, "Hey man, I don't want to bring up shit right now. It's your, your busy season right now, but don't forget you owe me a tea time at Tory Pines North because Ooh, my boy yeah. McCann is now the mayor. He just got sworn in, bro." Oh, it is. That's all it's I'm excited, bro. Let's go. Darren behind the bar pier now. El Pinchy Rowdy Pow, Stephanie Perez, Mr. Stoll, Samsung Simpson, Bolt Down, Jose Torres. <laughs> I know that name, Chico. Oh, El like Plomero. Chico. El it mero, sounds mero. political. El Mero Plomero got hit by a car this weekend, bro. What the fuck? No, not him. Not him. Right. Right. Roberto Alguero Flores, El Compa Fonzi, Shannon Lynette, Hernan Hernandez. J Ford, J Ford. What's up, Cliff? J Ford is angry as fuck. Tattoo fu Jesus. No, no, he's Why? What now. did you guys do to him? J Ford got a flat tire. Oh mm -hmm. no! Yeah. And then Steve didn't answer his call to pick him up. I know. I was at oh, work. No. I was at work. You and called the right person. Yeah, yeah. yeah you should have called Chef. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Hag, Otter Stop Blows, David Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, ay, te dolió. <laughs> Chef, Diva, Danny O. I enjoyed hanging out with Danny O. Good dude. We're going to talk more about that. Yeah. My algo Good bueno. Dude. Roberto Pinguino, RJ, Willie Ruiz, Tony Marroquín, David, Jose Uribe, Ernesto Quintero, the nurse Navarro. <laughs> I am going to say Tony Yu, I Sonia, Sarah Stoll, shit. Cesar Fernandez, Jose Fernandez, Martin Casas, Maison Innocentes, Sir Alex Rivera, Matthew Echeverria, Roxana, Theo Collins, Roxanne. Omar Sanchez, Abby Hellebron? Is it Hellebron? Hellebron. Heilbron. It's Hellebron. Oh, you know how to spell that one. It's Hellebron. Hellebron. <laughs> Brian Vong, Elias Delgado, Eric oh, yeah, Ruiz, Maddie, Eddie Will. Annie Wilkes, excuse me. I know uh, something. Oh, what do you know? What do you know? I know something. Oh, man. Are we going to get into that? Hey, yo, no, Droopy. No. We prom yeah. no, I know who the fuck we you are, Droopy. We promised they. Yeah. 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 That name. We did promise we're not going to bring them up. Yeah. But we, hey. we know who Annie Wilkes is? Yeah, I know who the fuck Annie Wilkes oh. is. Oh. <laughs> I know. I know exactly who it is. And I'll, we'll get into that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Jesus. Here we go. Uh, Bill Lukey, Arcadio Hi, Mora, Pablo Cacahuates, BJ Jesbera. Oh. Oh, okay. What a loser. Wow. What a loser. <laughs> Mike Bebe? Bebe? Mike Bebe. Bebe. Evelyn Bernardi, LJP, Giovanni Correa, Ben Bikes for Beer, Hexis, Is he Felipe still Mraz. The bomb? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie Brennan in. Brennan in. in, in, in. No. How awesome is it that she read Hexis? Chef Claudia. Oh, me. Oh. Justin Seleska. I was like, wait, me. Look, year. <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, disposable income? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Justin Salaska, Aaron Hill, Matt Lawson, Enrique Montalvo, Hi, Hector Jedi. Munguia, Erica the Baker, <laughs> Alberto Aguirre. I love that. Oh, dude. Osvaldo Perez. You got to preface it by doing laser Latino and then go, wrong. Oh, <laughs> the whole thing. Oscar Uribe, Giovanni Sanchez, Adrian El Abuelo, Marino Go Gomez, oh, Israel Castillo, Muski, Selena Lugo, Muskies. Brandon, Sal Maldonado, and Page Four. Are you doing four? You want me to do four? Oh, shit. I'll do it. I got you. 
anything. Josh Dexter, Dicky Islands, Aisha Lee, Ed Anaya, Carla Caro, Hedger Power, TKO, oh. Daily Liquor Store, Mike, Sonia Baca, Robert, Little Rob Lara, bro. Well, I'm giving him a well, lot of attention. Well. I'm giving that for a lot of attention on the shit. I saw lately, Liquor Store Mike last night. The camera loves him, though. Oh, honestly. man, he's little. Yeah. He's a little guy, man. Because he fits in the camera. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Denise Moreno, Antonio Brito, Angel Fish Hernandez, Scott Donaghy, El Chef Juarez, Lozano, Oscar Kimu Cantra, Lozano. You're coming on, bro. Don't worry. You're coming on. No maybe, le pedo. maybe not this week. Maybe not next week. But soon. Maybe not next year. Te, que se very, soon, very soon. You're coming on, bro. El Dodger Arze. Fuck the Dodgers. Karen Small Barnett ranting with Ramos. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Jay Escobar. Samantha <laughs> Reina. <laughs> Lieutenant David Hoyos. Gustavo Gonzalez. El Junior. A. Hey, I brought Gus some fucking tamales oh? from one of the ladies that posts up in front of our lunch stop at UPS. Mm. Motherfuckers, you better leave at least one for Gus. Oh, I'm scared of him. I, I know. You better one. leave at least one. Wrapped. He does, you know how he likes unwrapped. Hey, hey, what color is that belt? Mm. Ira, Christian Ira, Moreno. Ira, Ira, Ira. Yeah. Here you go. Pichy all right, there's, there's three, three left. All right, yeah. Rodrigo, Christian Moreno, and his ever-growing family. Fernando Jespera, La Love Lady. You. It was nice hanging out with her too. Hell yeah. We had a very it's good nice time, man. And that's the more than a three years makes me pure. You shit on her all night. Gavin, <laughs> that's Tom how he has a good time. <laughs> Veronica Rocha, John Gennaro, Cesar Torres, Ruben Lopez. Oh my God, look at us. That's we Torres. are done. We are done. We are done. We are done. And for those of you that are new to the podcast, we read all of the Patreon members' names. Por guapa. Mm-hmm. Tell them why. Mm-hmm. Because you mean a lot to me. You yes. mean a lot to yes. us. None of this is possible without, of the 200, without about 15 of you. None of this is possible. <laughs> uh, <let me> <laughs> <laughs> no, no, cierto. You, it, it, nothing is possible without you guys. So we look forward to continuing to read everything that you got. But we also got to highlight some things. You know, um, recently I decided to take my talents to a new, uh, you know, a new sponsor. So oh. let, let me hear, let me hear that champ is here mm. button. Let me no, hear. Bro, oh, hold oh, hold on, hold on. this is a moment. A moment. Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. The champ is here. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, oh, 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 oh. the flip. The oh. flip. Oh. Oh. Am I coming in clear? <laughs> Am I coming in clear? Look at that shit, bro. See, oh no, big ups to Bobby Tribal for uh, allowing us and bequeathing this. Yeah. Uh, Exciting opportunity mm-hmm. to be sponsored by Tribal, a company that we respect. Fuck, dude, like more than more than most, more than yeah. most. We're not very respectful to people, but when it comes to Theo Bobby, you know we don't fuck around. You know we're all about it. Mm-hmm. So, what does that mean to you? That means discounts. That means a whole lot of discounts. If you have an Emo Brown Social Club card, if you have an Emo Brown card, twenty percent off at the lower mm-hmm. left on all items. But don't get too crazy. What is the lower left? Because the Pendletons their, only uh, get ten percent off. Headquarters on Seventeenth and. Island in downtown where they have not only the lower left mm. store, the podcast, Slappy's Garage. Cool. This, this is basically yeah. everything that we want to do. Oh, and, yeah. and fucking Uncle Bobby just taking us under his wing and then just showing me the ropes, bro. Yep. So I'm, I'm fucking eternally grateful for what he's doing. 50% off if you don't have a card. But if you happen to say, the champ sent me, you're going to get that 15% off just for showing up. Online discount for those of you who uh, don't like to leave the house. Why don't you go online to tribalgear.com, Emo Brown 22 for 15% off. <sighs> what a time to be alive. I'm going today. I'm going to go right after this because I need to stock up on a lot of tribal gear. I only have this hat right now, so I need to go. Hey, hey, but you know what? There's worse shirts to wear. <laughs> oh, hey, Don, Rosalino, Don Rosalino Sanchez. <laughs> Ahí está. Que onda? You know what? Right now, let's talk about the Alwood. Yes. Let's talk about the Alwood. If you can, can make we? your way over here, my uh, lovely Vanna White. Uh, she prepared another drink for us this week. <laughs> this drink is going to be called the Latin Lover. As soon as you get to the, the microphone. Gentleman. As soon as you get to the microphone, get on it. <laughs> the Latin Oof, thank you, Lover. Thank you. Thank you. This thank is you. a wow. shot, it looks like. Everybody. Oh, it smells way too good. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Is a Latin lover. No, that's me and my Jean-Paul What is a Latin Cartier? lover? Tell us everything. What is a Latin lover? Time to shine. It's a tamarindo vodka, passion fruit, and lime. Vodka. Mm. I blame this on BJ. We can't hear you. Can you? You got to get on the mic, girl. Get on the the mic, mic, girl. How are you going to start co-hosting the show if you can't even get on the mic? <laughs> get in there. Which mic is my you gotta, mic? You got to get nice and close. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay, so this drink is a Latin lover made up by one of our bartenders, Kenya. So nice. Kenya. Love her. Okay, so this is going to have passion fruit, lime, and tamarindo vodka. Mm. And it is super simple. We rim it mm. with a mango or pineapple chamoy. This is dangerous. People it's love this shot. so good. People it's love this shot. Drink. Yeah. Um, it's not bucanas? Shit. 
No, that's just you. Is that am I literally yeah, the I only one that orders bucanas every time I go in? Yes. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I ordered bucanitas. Ah, there you go. Right. How do you? <laughs> and they looked at me like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "That's his drink." <laughs> But yeah, this is our best-selling drink. It's awesome. People have it over ice. We do watermelon version, and then we do a strawberry version of this, too. What else we got going on at the Alwood now, finishing up the year, wrapping up the year? Well, we have our Christmas party coming up. I feel like I'm kind of on the... I'm getting my... My uh, fit back. At, I just got back from New York, so I'm kind of like, ooh, Ooh, how is New on? York? I was hanging out with Jay Z. <laughs> yeah, I had my Jesus. first vacation in like a year and a half, and yeah. it was awesome. Though, What'd you do? You know, <laughs> <laughs> what, okay, well, you can remember. <laughs> I ate a lot of food. Oh, nice. I, I ate my way through. I didn't have a single piece of pizza or hot dog though. Okay, What? girl, get it. Listen. There's a lot more things they eat in New York than just pizza and I hot dogs. I really wanted to have that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, it was a great time. I uh, I hurt. I got bruises. You, right? yeah. you got bruises. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Lost my phone the first night. Oh, yes. Definitely uh, <laughs> good fun. But yeah, no, it was good. Good times. I was reading that in order to get a license to sell hot dogs, to sell wieners, bro, the most expensive wiener slanging spot. This is what happens right? when you're drunk and you're yeah. hanging out at a cookie party. You get to learn a lot of outlandish shit. It costs two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars to procure a license, yeah. a vendor's license. But that's the man right outside Central Wrong. Park. Wrong. To sell I think what? It's yeah. Like has, is it outside Central Park? Or outside the museum? We I were we were told it was outside Central uh, Park. Oh my! Imagine so would, you're slinging it for seven dollars. Central a Park fucking is too wiener. large of a space. It would have to be like like a. Um, yeah, he has a very. I big think space he has real wiener. estate. Yeah. For sure. That's crazy. I mean, everything in New York yeah. comes at a cost. In order to be a taxi driver, you got to buy a medallion. Those medallions, I guess they cost like 250 Gs. And then Uber and Lyft came along and killed that bene- that killed that whole fucking business model. So it's like, oh, man, I'll, think, I'll, I'll stay in Chula Vista. I could see stay it at the Chula Met. Vista. I mean, there are so many people there. I mean, thousands upon thousands of people there. It's the most iconic place to go in New York. I mean, it would either be there or like somewhere like um, the, what is it called? The fucking the point Statue one. Of no, the, the other Empire one. State Building. Thank you, Empire State Building. I can never fucking remember the name of that building. Alicia I Keys. went over there. I just Alicia looked at. I've been Empire in there State of Mind. Is that why? It's <laughs> full. <laughs> I'm gonna take this shot. I'm gonna That's take this shot. <laughs> Salucita to UCC. Cheers to UCC. Cheers to, UCC. Cheers Cheers to, UCC. Cheers to everybody at the Elwood who made our holiday party er- mm, amazing. Mm, 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 mm. That is dangerous. I contact. That is blood. dangerous, man. Oh. Danger. Ah, what else do we got going on? We got three punk ale shit. The World Cup is over, so uh, five dollar pints will come back because why not? I mean, I like to I like to do good things. I like to do Thank good things for my people. Um, Matt from the Manhattan, let me borrow this. Oh, nice. Uh, your oh, your uh, business. Uh, what do you, what do you guys call each other? Well, it's partners. Business partners. Yeah. Um, he let me borrow this because I was at the Manhattan when uh, the Manhattan was uh, on their Christmas party. So Ari and remind me his name, Angel. Angel. They were both there, and I was. It was. It was like just too much of a good time. And then Matt and everybody showed up, totally annihilated. Oh uh, really? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. If Matt, I, I don't know video. if Matt wants to hear that. Allegedly. <laughs> I had, I had, I had video. No, his wife was there. We were all there. It was great. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, but it was funny because he had two of these, and he was like holding them like this, <laughs> making them spin. Jesus uh, but I sounds like Matt. Doing that. Matt did say that he wanted to share that if anybody needs a break during the holidays, um, doesn't have family, or wants staying out, um, the Manhattan is going to be open. Um, On Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. Um, oh, so if you song. need to, a break from, I don't know, maybe you can burn your turkeys or your tamales, um, or you just want to get away from your family or go have a drink before you face the family that you maybe not don't like so much. Um, when he said that, I was like, dude, I could. I'm a, I think me and my mom are going to end up there. Oh, you, too. you too. Okay, oh, cool. Yeah. So the, that, I think Matt, that's cool you're information. You're not special, know. Matt. The Alwood <laughs> is doing the exa- <laughs> the Alwood is doing the exact same thing. Partner, the brewery is oh, doing the oh, exact baby. same thing. You, you know, well, that's good no. to partner. know. Though. I think that's good to know because a lot of us, you know, during the holidays, we think everything is closed. Mm. Yeah, that's a so fair if point. you can go and have like a drink before, like you're gonna face all of those you know, tias that are going to critique you oh. and like, did you gain five more pounds or do you have a boyfriend or all those mm. questions? They always say that to me. Right? Yeah. You know, yes. so yes, you get what both. I'm saying. So definitely make sure to visit all Oddly those cool enough, places. Oddly enough, those days are pretty busy. Really? The, the Thanksgiving <laughs> after like 5 p.m. will open the brewery. And then, and I know we're open at uh, the Alwood as well. And it gets busy. Yeah. People want to work those days. I just did the schedules for like the next two months or to, sorry, next month. And I say, hey, I plan on closing all these holidays unless somebody wants to work. 
And unless somebody wants to make a little bit of extra cash. So yeah, I got two people that said, I'll work, I'll work. I was like, all right, cool. So that's cool. Everybody loves working when it when it's a holiday because people show up. Well, We've, people tip better now, nicely hey, hey, too. Hey, Elton Rodriguez, you better put that down. Where are you going? <laughs> 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 no, I'll play she was like ready to book it. She's like, I gotta go work. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? I wanted uh, to wait until we got into you, a little CC. bit of a uh, delicious some Bye. World Cup talk. Sports. But you know what, man? Let's go over this now. What is that? This is something that... Uh, Genius marketing idea. This is something that was provided to me by Grasshopper. Changebuds.com. You know? As a gift? Yeah, 20% off when you make it clack. Not this. This sold out relatively quick. So this is brought to you by Jeter. We read about them a little earlier oh, in the year. <laughs> yeah. Weren't they being sued? I don't know. Just kidding. I, I don't, don't know. know. Nothing about that. <laughs> Chef Claudia Sandoval. <laughs> But this, Spot they gave Instagram. it to us. They gave it to us. It Basically, it's a highlight of all of uh, some joints around the world. And oddly enough, the joints well, that are provided. The world. Yeah, How the many joints, of these can get you arrested? No, then? they're not. I don't know. So they have a U.S. one, you know, L.A. Confidential. Sas. I'm oh, what's up? That's the we name. also have a Mexican one. Boom. Acapulco Gold. We got Ooh. Brazil. Acai Berry. Wait, how many are in Acapulco there? Acapulco Gold is the one from uh, Reefer Madness. Paris OG from France. I, I was really looking forward to, to smoking this one, but unfortunately, you know, a young man known as the goat was able to do it. England's London Pound Cake. I'm kind of stoked to fucking try to smoke yeah. that one. But today, in honor of, I think I'm going to tap into this one, Argentina. Oh, the defending Con champs, leche. Man. This one is in honor of El Messi. He gets down, bro. You know, I know, there, I know so there's a lot of hate. You, you still don't give him the goat title. Yeah, I just did. Okay. Yeah, I just did. Well, I mean, a couple Ooh, weeks ago we talked about people. it. And you Wait, said, so there's only one Ooh. in there? In yes. Each one? Ooh, wow. Look at that. Wow. That That's looks beautiful. Hey, gosh, this shit looks dangerous. For <laughs> <laughs> hey, if somebody's going to want to smoke this, come and get it. I think I'm going to just rip it real quick and give it away. But hey. Hey, right, Justin, slow down. Grasshopper, thank you very Somebody much for coming through. Jeter, thank you very much for <laughs> providing this World Cup 22 variety pack. This shit is legit, man. I'm going to keep this. and cool. I think I'm just going to keep replenishing it. Really and emo it brown yeah. joints in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Marketing idea. Dude, right, it's so, so cool. Yeah. Like, mm. I, I'm not a smoker, but that looks like something I would totally have in my house. That's mm. awesome, It's just man. cool, what you know? smart idea. Ooh, Flamero, come get this shit, bro. Oh, uh, allegedly. Ooh, allegedly. Flamero. You want to hit this before it goes that way? It tastes good. It's got like a little bit of a um, sweet. Oh, it smells delicious. Yeah. Like a, like a little... Uh, Dulce sure. aftertaste. Oh man, that right? Is good. Fuck, I don't want to give it to you, bro. <laughs> Fuck. I think I just fucked up. Oh shit. Mmm. <clears throat> mm. uh, keep it past, past, oh, puff, puff, okay? past. No, no, you're oh. gonna have to oh, is that give sound? it back uh-huh. to him. Give it back, give it back to, him. to him. This is awesome. So yeah, when you're done, put that shit back in. I don't want you to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, brother. Is Enjoy. it like? Does that have kefir on there? I think, I think so. so yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> it's got kefir Sutherland on there. Nice. So yeah, oh, you know what? We were talking about this. It's a genius idea, man. Brilliant. You, you man. gotta give it to people who are in the fucking cannabis company really? products. Like, they look, know what look they're, they're doing. Packaging. Look at this, man. And to impress you. I'm a packaging person because I used to work in advertising. This is fucking genius. This is great advertising. How much things do this retails for? Uh three hundred dollars. I don't know. I'm gonna say a hundred. I'm gonna say a hundred. Oh, it's yeah. more than that. Yeah. It's like six five joints. joints. Six, six joints. joints. Six joints. That at least, at least 120. Uh, 120. Yeah, How least. much would you pay for it? $200. You would pay $200 for this? Yeah. I, I'm not going to throw it's it away. It's a really you know? cool gift. I mean, and, yeah, and the, the, just wow. the inside of it with like the field the and everything. Mm, that's no. insane. That's Are we turning to WGN right now? Jeter, I don't know who spoke. <laughs> I don't know who spilled, who spoke QVC, illy of QVC, you, but. QVC, I don't know. I don't have a fucking TV. <laughs> in, in my book, Jeter, you are a okay. No, you know what? You know what? You know, before you smoke it, you put that shit away. I think that's a Put that out and put it in there, sir. Fuck, man. Albert Aguirre. Let's talk about our real and estate medical. agent. <laughs> Let's talk Close. about the things. The all things people's. real estate brought to you by Albert Aguirre. That's all I got for him right now. I sent him messages, no response. I sent my grito a message, no response. Oh, They're, so you know, I think we're just gonna have to jump right into it. We got bro. powerhouses. We're just gonna have to jump right into fun. it. Yeah. Chef Claudia Sandoval, hit me it. Hit me with a little bit of your uh, algo bueno. Algo bueno. I mean, I have a couple of algo buenos. I just spent the weekend with my friends, my best friends in Lake Arrowhead, which was really really fun. I just had my tamales masterclass this last Oof. Thursday. How'd it go? Oh, my God. It was so good. We hosted it at the Soap Factory, which is um, a new space venue that's being built out in the com- on Commercial Street. And they're going to be they have right next to it. They have these um, prefab kind of. Have you guys ever seen those um, like the truck box things? What are they called? 
the containers. containers. Yeah, like the containers. containers. Thank you, containers. Oh, like the shipping containers? Yeah, yeah okay. but they've but they've created thirty um, uh, artist studios in there, like for wow. artists to live there, awesome. so that they can transform that whole area into an arts district. Hell yeah! Um, so I definitely have to introduce you to Susana Peredero, who um, is a part of Vanguard, Vanguard yeah, Culture. Yeah. She's going to be hosting a um, huge festival uh, down there in September of 2023. Um, so there's this huge planning going on and. The soap factories uh, kind of reached out, and we're going to see what we can build out in that area as well because they're going to be building out a kitchen. And so we're thinking some dinner series, oh, yeah. maybe some educational series. So lots of work coming up for me on that on that front. Um, Get it. Very very excited for Get that. Get your money, girl. Yeah. Get did, that did check. Did you guys see the story about one of the stadiums at Qatar for the World Cup that was actually the the base of it was built from those shipping containers? Yeah. Oh, and I they, did it. Yeah. They were able to quickly deconstruct it and take it elsewhere. Yeah. And wow. Like, yeah. The majority of one of those stadiums that seated almost thirty five thousand people. Yeah. Was built out of primarily shipping containers. Wow. What that's a trip, awesome. Man. Like the entire stadium was able to be broken down and taken elsewhere. With money comes Super technology. Cool. With technology comes the ability to do whatever the fuck you mm. want, bro. But also it's a way of recycling them, you, you know? Yeah. Like Scarface and Robocop at the same time. I love it. <laughs> First you get the money, then you get the technology. <laughs> then we get the power. <laughs> <laughs> and then we die. <laughs> Algo bueno. Algo bueno. Give it to me now. Oh uh, man, I had the most wonderful getaway. Natasha and I took three days off and went to Disneyland, you know, I have a child and I take her to Disneyland. It's not the popular theme around here, but <laughs> can never be me. <laughs> You'll never confuse me for taking a fucking um, infant to Disneyland, bro. Fuck this time we did it different. You know, normally we go super early in the morning and then we're out by midday, but she wanted to watch the fireworks and we were going up the next day to LA because uh, I took her to see her favorite artist, Billie Eilish. At the hey, what was that? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Time out. How, uh, how often do you fucking go to Disneyland, bro? Uh, once a month, at least. At least once a month? Yeah. Well, bro, that passport. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna man. say that's not too bad. Once a that's, month. It's ninety. The way you talk about it, it's just like you go every month. fucking week, man. No, not that much. Right. It's because he's only here every three weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So hey. that means like once a month, yeah. you know? Yeah. Chef came fucking fire. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I wish you could afford me more, but you can't. So <laughs> she's mean when she's. Stoned. I'm supposed to pay you, bitch. <laughs> what the fuck. You weenie. You guys are getting paid. Oh. <laughs> you guys are getting paid. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there, there was. Oh wow! Ah, what is this? What's yeah, up, Theo, like Bobby? <laughs> maybe maybe um, you know this. I don't know. A little tribal but, action. But the most wonderful experience, dude. Like living through her and watching how she interacted with the concert, how crazy she was going, how much she was singing along. That was such a fucking rad experience, and it was cool to see her perform. She puts on a fucking show, and it's hard to believe. She's 20 years old, yeah. and she is just doing this outlandish, crazy, worldwide shit. Um, highlight for me was that she brought out Dave Grohl as her uh, special guest, and they did an acoustic cover of My Hero, and that was really cool because they were exchanging stories cool. about Taylor Hawkins, who had just passed away, and Aww. paying homage to him. So it, it was it was a dope experience, man, and it was just cool. Like That's the shit I live for, is living... To provide my kid lifetime memories that I know. We, we get it, bro. Yeah. We get it. We Did Natasha know who <laughs> Dave Grohl was, or she was like... Yeah. Oh, you know what she said? Jesus! No, she went, isn't that the guy from Nirvana? Oof. That was nice. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Bro, hey, I'll take it, man. I was like, ah, uh, yeah, maybe. He maybe. is a guy from Nirvana. Nirvana. Let's, let's talk about this later. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, was, it was a rad few days, man. It was cool to travel with her and have dope conversations on the road, man. Like, as big as that kid is getting... It, it's also inspiring to me that, you know, we can talk like adults now. We can have these conversations, and it breaks my heart to know she's growing up, but I know she's growing up right. So and I'm that's happy. a good thing, though. Yeah. Wifey's always like, oh, aren't you sad that these kids are just getting bigger? It's like, no, I'd be sad if they weren't. Well, I'd be sad fair. if they just, you know, <laughs> yeah. everything just came to a cease. I was like, yeah. this is, this. we should uh, celebrate every new day with them, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I love it. I mean, my, my oldest, I can have that relationship with right now. Like, we'll sit down and like, Dad, I just want to sit next to you. I want to talk to you. Okay? Let's, let's go for it. We'll watch him. He's like, what do you think of that? I'm like, oh, fuck. You, yeah. you want to get into it? Yeah. I was like, all right. My middle one is like, <laughs> Daddy, buy me V-Bucks. <laughs> daddy, Daddy, yeah. Daddy, I want I, this. I heard, what I heard are V-Bucks? Uh, uh, V-Bucks are a currency, <laughs> a form of currency used to purchase shit on PlayStation Network. So uh, the original uh, NFT. Yeah, the original, <laughs> bro. <laughs> hey, I'm Barry Just Baron. This the is your crypto <laughs> update of the week. Update of the week. <laughs> crypto <laughs> Corner with BJ Crypto Corner. Yes, oh so man! Yeah. And then the little one, bro. The little one's just—he's just a happy little fucking guy, bro. Holly, he's just a, Holly's the, oh man! But it, it was—it was just weird because she was like, "What's your favorite song?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" She's like, well, "What's your favorite song?" I like this one, and I'll tell you why because of the lyrics. And I'm like, "What the hell?" Like, and that's cool to me that she's that in touch with that shit. Yeah, that's I like awesome. seeing the positive daddy 
top notch guy and then getting to hang out with you on fucking <laughs> Saturday and seeing the complete opposite. Like, just by that, I would think that this motherfucker is incapable of, of having that inside of him. But here you are. Here you are changing minds. Life <laughs> is about balance. Because look at that fucker. Where's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So right there, we were, uh, oh, look, I'll bring it a little algo bueno. Then. My algo bueno was, you know, I get to hang out with you weenies this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and that, that was, that's rare and random. And, it really is. And, uh, and unplanned. You know, my parents have this weird uh, Anglo tradition and we're us. <laughs> they, they have a cookie party, bro. A fucking cookie party. You guys familiar with what a cookie party is? Well, let me tell you, it's a party where you bring cookies. And then this party, it's every every uh, holiday season, so it's usually <laughs> like the week the week before Christmas, and people will cruise in. Three and, people, uh, two brain cells. That's the name of that picture. And, and it's La crazy because everybody will bring in a dozen cookies, you know, a dozen yeah. cookies, and there's like 15 to 20 people that participate, yeah. and everybody brings cookies. That's the lame shit going inside. <laughs> You know, this is this is all going inside, you know, kids spilling coffee on them, burning themselves. Oh, man. That was no that, happen? that fucking happened. Yeah. White kids are terrorists, bro. Oh, he wasn't I was outside. Yet. Yeah, he wasn't there yet. White kids are terrorists. So you better keep an eye on half of your kid. <laughs> Oh, we, we celebrate this cookie party at a special place in the South Bay known as the Christmas Circle. The hmm. Christmas Circle has been long in existence. I want to say over 50 fucking years. Your dad's at, at 60. 60? All right, 60. Man, my dad is senile and he can barely hear, bro. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're going to get into Uh-oh. that. We're going to get into that. <laughs> my Yahweh of the week. Uh. <laughs> no, but this is awesome. The Christmas Circle, they have an event where uh, I would say like 90% of the houses who live in that little community, the little circle, yeah. they all participate. They, they set up their properties. They decorate them. We know a few people that actually live on the block. We hung out with Willie Ruiz, bro. Your insurance. Yeah, yeah Chula Vista's very own. And we got, he gave us fucking Trulies. Well, he gave us, <laughs> he gave us Topo Chico. Topo Chico, and yeah. And he gave Dan a white claw. And I, felt I was like, fool, like, you ain't got no tequila or nothing? He's like, no, dog, I don't have it. I have Trulies. I was like, whatever. So yeah, we get to hang out. It's very community Did you drink it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, they yeah. drank it. We, we didn't it. drink it. We destroyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Was it pineapple <laughs> flavor, bro? It's yeah. so oh, good. Hey, exotic pineapple. Casa strikes me as a pineapple. Pineapple Topo Chico seltzer drinking motherfucker. Hell yeah. No? Pass? Hi, right, whatever. Don't he's like. mango. <laughs> he enjoys the finer things in life. Yeah, he's a we get to hang out with the community. We get to have a good time. Everybody's over there just drinking. Every, every front yard that you visit, they're having like a little fucking kickback. Pardon my late 90s, early 2000s well, there, reference. There was, there was a Christmas but caroler. Yes. There was a band. Yes. There, there, there was everything. There's low riders going up around the yeah. circle. And then there's us. In and the then front, <laughs> then there's us in three the front. Punk shit everywhere. Dude, Whoa. I posted up. I brought up three punk canopy. I brought three yes. punk uh, a little fucking uh, a keg rather. And shout oh out to gosh. the wet weather report. Wet weather report was there, bro. Irish coffees. Oh, that's my what got me. What, oh man, <laughs> what got me was the Irish coffee. The Irish coffee that was like was him. next that looked like him. level, dude. That oh. was next level because he made them. We drank them, and that shit just and kept going. You drank one of those whole carafes on yeah, your own. Yeah, I, I was like, that's what heroes do. I was like, the wife is like, hey, I think I'm, I think I'm drunk. She's like, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've been drinking that coffee all night. So yeah, it's just it's communal. I got to hang out with these animals, chef. Like they came over, we had weed. It was just a bunch of homies. Doctor, the beard doctor showed up. Mm -hmm. Other people from the blog in the hood Bro, showed you, up. Your dad had the longest line for Capuzo mm. La Silla, where people were taking pictures, and he had that little animatronic Santa. Like my like dad is the Mexican Tim the Toolman Taylor. Yes. My dad is the Mexican Bob Vila. <laughs> you give if you give this motherfucker like if you give him uh, <laughs> like six pellets, that motherfucker will turn it into Noah's Ark before you come home, bro. <laughs> he, he he has a talent, man. I wish he bequeathed some of them talents on me. Thanks, Dad. Oh <laughs> shit. No, We're but that. <laughs> he built this killer fucking chair. I don't know if you can. I don't know if I have the chair. If you go on my Instagram, I, I, it's I, on I, I yeah. the picture. But he built a fucking chair because they went to one of the local malls and they're like, my mom said, oh yeah, he saw it and he was taking pictures of it. He's like, I'm gonna build that. This bro. motherfucker came home and built a humongous and that, ass chair. And that fit you, uh -huh. the beer doctor, uh -huh. Swanzo, mm -hmm. me. Me and Dan. No, you guys like, look like a bunch I, of like little rascals. That shit is load bearing. <laughs> there was like six. There was like six people on there, bro, and it held us, and it was nice and red. It looked like one of those like. Pee -wee, Pee Wee's Playhouse type of fucking <laughs> furniture. It's just all huge and it just dwarfs everything else around it. But yeah, man, it was awesome. There was you a know? Lot. Yeah, man. It, it was a excited. very good That's time. Cool. And they have it usually from like the second weekend in December through like uh, 
New Year's. Yeah. You know, and you can go out there. What's the point? You go out there, either walk, park, walk around the whole circle, or you just drive around. Yeah. 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 There's fucking food vendors. They're oh, selling, man. dude, they're selling bacon wrap <laughs> hot dogs this in the guy, corner. This guy hustled <laughs> the kid yeah, to go get bro. him. <laughs> I was lazy. I was smoking a lot of fucking weed, man. No, I, yeah, believe it. It was, uh, I, we smoked so much weed. Bro. How much weed did we so smoke? So much weed that we started smoking weed inside of a fucking sleigh that my dad fucking built. <laughs> Yeah, he was so disappointed too. He's like, it's like the the Mexican American. Oh, dude, that's not what I made that sleep. The dude, my dad cruised by and he's like, "Mijo, it makes me sad that you smoke in front of me." I said, "Well, turn around, motherfucker, because I ain't gonna stop." And he was trying to give me a lecture, and, and then I he takes bad. a joint out of your hand. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, he didn't. He saw it. That would be my dad. Man. My dad would be that guy. Like, I don't like the fact that you do this. Now he, let me, he let was. Let me take some. Yeah, he like, was geez. less than thrilled that you decided to pull that out in the garage. Why? Well, well I'm forty fucking three, bro. Oh, yeah, That's full of these kids. kids. Yeah. They're oh, no, no. Kids. All of a sudden, take it easy, Pastor Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, fucking my clean cut <laughs> fellow. <laughs> hey, wait. Somebody, man. Hey, wait. Tennis pinchy weed, okay, man. Uh, I was like, oh, look, at, look at me, who? My dad built that, man. Yeah. What the fuck? Look, I look like I a weenie. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a child. Dude, yeah, those are like my... the ones that like you see like in Little Italy yeah. and all of these places. I have the face of like, can, can I get down awesome. now? Can it's I like fucking right get down? The entrance, <laughs> the so it part? sets the tone. Wow. Like, hey, welcome. There are lines. I go lines, every year. Dude. A line down the block. There yeah. are lines. Oh, yeah. oh, look at my little yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. Hey, you better use up on where you go on that fucking Instagram. You're right. going to find something you don't want to see, bro. <laughs> 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 you better Stand take it down a notch. But yeah. The Christmas circle is like, it's like a Christmas like tradition. It really is. You go get your champurrado because you know you're going to be in your car waiting. Mm -hmm. You know it's kind of cold, or you just walk it if it's too long of a line. Because don't drive. Be. That's fucking lame, bro. But the, the now drive were driving it, uh -huh. it, they had their lights off. The kids oh, were yes, coming through the sun. Yes. But it's yes. such a short yeah. experience. It turns like a fifteen minute no, experience you just go in into circles. like a, I guess. But then you gotta go back. Oh, it's a little pale, bro. There's no, you the, literally yeah, go in circles. Was, uh, the traffic is it, bananas yes, there, dude. Like the people had the cones blocking off one lane and making sure that nobody was turning from the other neighborhood. It was fucking no. The people who live there aren't allowed to park on the street. Like I'd be so pissed every year. Like come on. There's always like one house that doesn't decorate. That's weird. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We were at there's the always like a couple. I think there's like two or three houses. And I'm not going to call like, oh. them out, but I know who they live next to. And we walk by and my, they, not our kids. It was for Halloween. Because they do the same shit for Halloween. Okay. That circle is you just like a, no, like a holiday. <laughs> like you go and they decorate the outside of their houses to like fucking Tim Burton style shit. And every, like I a lot of the houses participate. It's awesome. Oh, cool. So my, my kids were part of this group and they were trick or treating and they go into this house that's dark. And I was like, ooh. As I, right when I was gonna say, hey, maybe don't go on that one. Like the guy comes from around the, hey, get off my yard. Where we're not part, we're not doing trick or treat this year. And I was like, oh, oh man, shit. come on, BJ, I talk think, to your uncle. Yeah. Dog. Oh, did you, you think, think I have a oh, okay, no, <laughs> the uncle, accent? Okay. Give it away. Yeah. Well, my bad. Yeah. So yeah, there's always that one family <laughs> that doesn't want to play. But it's awesome. Aside from that, dog. Aside mm -hmm. from that, do you have a fucking uh, algo bueno this week or no? I have an algo bueno every week. Oh, okay. oh, oh Jesus. my god. Barry Chesbera, the, the crypto corner. No, nah, I'm. <laughs> Sorry to get cheesy with this one, but it's true because fucking the last couple weekends have been real rough. But like Fernanda's handling the holidays and everything that we got to go through like a fucking boss because, you know, I'm not the easiest one to plan with. You guys know, but <laughs> you know, I don't even like think we ever in, in, macros include scale. you in anything yeah. that requires <laughs> any fucking planning, so bro. We got a trip coming up this week to go to Michigan, you know, and uh, I'm sure on I should purpose? be getting packed and stuff already. Yeah, we're going to go see my parents, but do they live on the eight mile? The north of the eight up, mile, like, up, they live on like that negative eleven degrees mile now. Oh it's no, it's gonna be so bad. But uh, she's just handling all that shit. And on top of that, like yesterday, she made like this fucking bomb ass Christmas dinner for like us and her mom. Like, dude, she's crushing it. So, hey, like, hey, hey, what did you do, fucker? I didn't do shit. Did you this do? Is, you did she did this shit. This one did something wrong. By the <laughs> way, Fernanda, I personally love your hair. That might not be the uh, consensus You're about around late, my dude. Christmas. Sir. Oh, no, 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 no. It was awesome. It was <laughs> Why? What did you I do? Oh, my God. I enjoy hanging out with the What did bears. you say about her hair? Did you like? Oh, nothing. So she made some bomb-ass cookies. I was yeah. trying to bring oh, them in and be like, yeah. let's get them fucking oh, right you know. Oh, shit. <laughs> Remember should those I, cookies? Should I send the video? I made Steve a cookie. Go ahead. Yeah. It was delicious, wasn't it? It had the, ex the genitals on the exterior of the cookie. Wow. Yeah, so... It, <laughs> would you expect anything less? It was fun. And what do you say? Love. Just put it in your mouth? I, I started there first because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> yes. But it, it was a good a time. Leg. It was a fucking yeah. good time, bro. Anything we do at the Christmas circle and everything we did together, it was, it was cool. It was it was very family-oriented. It was very community. You know, like I nice. said, people were vending it. I'm going to fucking go again. I think on, um, on Christmas Eve. So I might post up. So if you guys are in the neighborhood, if you're in South Chula Vista, Whoa. West... 
Uh oh. On West Chula Vista, it's find be a yourself. Pink party. Find yourself uh, uh, on the corner of what? What is the corner? Whatever the beginning of Christmas Circle is. Third and F. Yeah, because no, what the fuck? <laughs> second and it's second uh, and Whitney, Whitney, Whitney and Mankato. And it's right there on Whitney second. And My parents have the house like right at the entrance. It'll be the one with the subtle red 25 foot foot cha- fucking chair in front. <laughs> yeah. It'll be very subtle. So if you guys want to cruise by, I might be slanging some beers. If you don't see the tent there, fucking don't even stop. Just keep it moving, bro. <laughs> I don't want my parents call me. Hey, Nico, I'm your parents gente, are the ultimate host, though. <laughs> bro, your bro, mom man. and your dad, they're so sweet. Yeah. They really are, man. Hanging out with your parents was really cool. It was, a, it was a fun treat. It's one of those things where I didn't see hanging out with them like as a youngster being fun. But now as we're older, like we we go on vacation together. We we go, we have dinner. We all hang out, bro. Your mom you know? keeps it real, real. <laughs> oh, my mom's fucking hood, bro. Oh everybody everybody assumes that I get my shit talking and, and my prickish uh approach to things uh, from my dad, you know, because yeah. he's very quiet, you know, he's just mm, in the corner, just kind of like flushing teeth if he's happy, if he's sad, <laughs> if he's angry. My mom, bro, I learned all my shit talking from my mom because my mom knows how to break people down without even like being a jerk, uh-huh. you know, I'm, and I'm really good at that too. Like I can tell you something and be like, yo, this motherfucker just shit all over me. And I'll be like, yes, I did. <laughs> My mom, basically, is an asshole, but I love hanging out with all of them, bro. It's one of those things where I, the older I got, I enjoy it. And now that we have kids and they get an opportunity, my kids are lucky, man. My kids have both of their grandparents still together, available, man. You know, my, my wifey's side, los suegros, and on my side. You know, we're still together. We're still together raising these kids. And I tell them, I say, hey, man, not everybody around you, not everybody in your family has this opportunity. So we're very, you know, we're very, we're very family kind of people. So if you're there next week and you see me out there, cruise by, I'll pour you some beers. I might even well, talk. I know Willie's doing the mariachi band. Mariachi, that's on Friday. Saturday or Friday. Friday, Friday. Cool. Yeah, I might, yeah. Oh, maybe I just post up Friday. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm, I'm taking Natasha, my mom. Yeah. What yeah. day? Friday. All right, I'll get them hey, all. Will, Willie's up here. <laughs> I'm my gonna get them drink, all. Dog. Oh, that's I'm what you think, drink. fool. She's about to. Yeah. When the city of Chula Vista gave us our own day on what? Natasha microdoses. So on August 9th. August 9th, she was drinking, bro. Your mama was there. I met her for the first time. She's like, she's like taking a little fucking little bottle of bucanitas out of her fucking lapel. <laughs> and she was like, mijo, mijo, quieres? I was like, no, no, señora. You know, you know what the funny thing is? She'll fuck with a michelada. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, I'll bring a michelada. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a little something chale of the week, chef. What do we got? Well, my friend's kid just got ran over the other day. Mm, that's Holy shit. He literally was uh, walking to school on that. You guys remember last Monday? It was like super rainy. I do. Um, anyway, so uh, he was walking to school and on his walk to school, somebody was exiting um, the Hamishoff exit uh, off the freeway. Okay, 54. And just totally swiped him, knocked him over, knocked him unconscious. No manches. And left. How old is so this little kid? Run. Uh, he's uh, 11 years old. Pobrecito. Um, so anyway, he poor little guy like called his mom and he was like, can I just go back to school? Like not realizing. Anyway, he had a pretty severe concussion, had to go get Jesus. all these things um, going on. And we still don't have any information. But, you know, I think with the holidays and I get it, like there's weather and there's all these things going on. I just my my kind of reminder to everybody is just to slow down. Um, you know, we... We obviously consider the fact that this could have gone a completely different direction and he could possibly not be alive right now. And so we're all counting our blessings. Um, But uh, in case you guys didn't know, uh, a bicyclist was just killed in Valley Center by a hit and run. Pay uh, attention, Plomero, man. This is right up your community, dog. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, the authorities said on Sunday that they were asking the public to help find the driver um, involved in a hit and run crash that killed a 71 year old bicyclist in Valley Center on Saturday. Um, So. Guys, just a friendly reminder. You're going to be out on the streets. I get it. It's a stressful time. You, you're running late. Like, it's getting darker. All of these things. But all the more reason to slow down and realize Justin. that that could be somebody's kid. That could be somebody's family member. And imagine having to lose somebody during the holidays. That, there's, like, no worse thing. That, yeah. Forever. Etching. For, exactly. Yeah, forever. Like, uh, you, you'll forever ruin somebody's holiday. And it's not even about that. It's These are people. Just slow down. Uh, well, I brought up Plumero. He's one of the homies. He uh, part of the crew, and they have their own bike Roots gang. Riders. They got their own bike gang. Oh, fool. I didn't yeah. know these things existed until like a until COVID hit, bro. Until the lockdown happened, I got all hyped. I bought a fucking bike, better a little BMX. What do I got? I got a G. I got a GT, G unit, yeah. bro. A G oh, unit. Okay. G- 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 it's a worldwide. It's a nice little blue. I just, I, I just, I <laughs> just. You ain't know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, they're like the Paisa version of Sons of Anarchy. Oh down my here, god. Right? <laughs> So these motherfuckers, they traveling 
fucking gangs, bro. What's a group of and uh, cyclists? Gaggle. Let's call gaggle. them gaggle. 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 A gaggle of gaggle. cyclists, gaggle. bro. Right. There's a gaggle of cyclists, bro. <laughs> just going down. For, this motherfucker does it like every day. But no, he, they go he doesn't even ride the bike. He like mm. stands on that. Oh, yeah, motherfucker does like Teen Wolf on the, on the top of a van. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, is it way she guy But no, man, in all seriousness, you know, they travel in large groups. Yeah. And as a motorist, you gotta pay attention. Like, yeah. how are you not see like 50 to 100 motherfuckers on a bike and hit one and leave is ridiculous. <sighs> you know, so that old man, older gentleman, fucking, that sucks. Oh, look at that. Video. This homie What's right up? here. Oh, oh, oh wait. Shit. Oh, What's up? What's up? Oh, What's up? Oh, not him. No, that was a nerd. <laughs> uh, what's up? You guys did dog? a really good hiding oh the tandem God. bike. Ooh, look at them. <laughs> Members. Oh, shit. There's that. Brandon in? Where? Are you even here, Plumero? Oh, there you are. You're behind oh, me. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's there. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, Lord. Prison. Do you fucking surf on this video or no? No, verdad? So, yeah, man. They hit one of your homies in your crew, and he just dipped. Oh, man. If you get an opportunity, go to Emo Brown later. We're going to share that video. If you have an opportunity, share any video you need for your friend's son so we can put oh, it out you. there. Because yeah, right now, it's, like, it's the fucking holidays. This it's is never so cool. This is never cool any time of the year. But I feel like if it includes a child, it involves a child, yeah. and it's a fucking holiday season, it's totally. like... Amplify your level of attention. Yeah, you can still be on your phone, you know, texting. What? No, I'm just playing. Because yeah. that, that goes against. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do any of that when you're driving. It's a way is and if you fuck dangerous. Up, stop. Like, yeah, I mean, if you hit somebody, like the minimum you should be doing is stopping and making sure that they get. See, by the way, that's why you pay for car insurance. Go ahead. Literally, that's why you pay for car insurance. And if something happens, I mean, what if he was bail? You know, that's like, what all goes you have through to my man. Five hundred dollars. These like, motherfuckers the, aren't stopping because they're on a sick one and they don't want you know. But it's like. If you're going to hit, don't run. Exactly. If you're gonna hit, <laughs> As a skater back in the day, I got hit by a bunch of cars. Yes, only uh, like really bad two times, but nobody ever stopped. Nobody well, yeah. ever stopped. Blows my mind. I'm like, how would you not stop and be like, hey, there's somebody in the street. Well, <laughs> and, and the message also is not just just you know not just stopping but slowing down and i say this as my dad literally a lot of people don't know this my dad works in traffic control so you guys oh. see when they like close these streets yes just the other day my dad got sideswiped by somebody because Shit. they're just not fucking people are not slowing down if you're by the way if you guys didn't know if you are on the freeway and you see that there are people working on the side of the road or there's somebody pulled over by a police officer if you can safely you're supposed to move into the other lane mm -hmm. people are not respecting that and it's like like my dad, like I, I could literally lose my dad because somebody wasn't fucking paying attention that, or was, was on their phone. Personally, I've had it. That was my personally, first, I've had it. That was my first <laughs> job in traffic control. That shit's scary. It's, it's scary. Like, yeah, down yeah. like it's scary. In the middle of the night. I, I, yeah, and my like yeah, oh, my dad like does SDG the exact same a, thing. Yeah. Like shuts shuts down freeways so that they can throw power lines over the freeways and all that kind of stuff. So, guys, like I'm just saying it. Listen to it. Slow down. It doesn't. It like it doesn't. It, it'll be so much better for all of us. There it is, man. Give me a little Charlie moment of the week right there, Cesar. Uh, man, uh, our friends at Voice of San Diego have Oof. put out a few articles recently about the craziness and the escalation of the homeless situation in San Diego, and it's yeah. getting out of control, man. I think they're estimating there's like 1,800 people just in that downtown area alone. That's and a lot of people, bro. Bro, and... and I got to see a lot of that firsthand. Um, Jay Clip over here, he was... Uh, he was able to procure some, some like, I guess they were like, you know, heroin. Get well. Oh, wow. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! These, little, uh, these little kids that for people, quickly. you know, that you, you handing out to the less fortunate. And he had 50 of them, dog. We parked on 17th and Island uh, just down the street from Tribal. And within five minutes, dog, his truck was surrounded. Yeah. And people were like trying to dig through the back. What else you got back there? And it's like, fuck, man. It was it was disheartening to see just how bad it's gotten down there, man. And like, you know, people were asking, "What do you have for kids? What else? What else are you bringing? What else? You know?" And, and it's, yeah, it was nuts to see it firsthand. And it's just it's scary to see it right now while it's getting so cold. And I'm fucking so thankful for the social club and the people that have donated all these blankets. We're gonna make good use of them, but. It's just terrifying how out of hand it's getting, it, and especially right now during the winter season. Yeah, we are. We're going to do something real special with them. We're going to turn a big quilt, put it on that big old chair in front of my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> that shit, that shit's staying with us, bro. Thank you all. Donate them blankets. They stay with me. Make a lovely quilt. Yeah. <laughs> no cierto, chef. You no, can take yeah, them with so you. It's so sad. It's yeah. so sad. It's just, yeah, it's out of control, and it, and it sucks to see it firsthand right in our backyard right here. That's I mean, here, man. Here, right off of Third Avenue, that park. Uh, I mean, 
They've moved a lot of the homeless people from that park. And I don't come, know how. And they've come Some of them way. have come back. And you know what I didn't know? I didn't know that the CVPD has like a whole task force. Yes. And, and I think they team up with uh, local uh, firefighters and they go and they, and they check on people. You know, they're there and I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, that's cool. I, I, I'm, you know, I didn't know that existed. I'm yeah. very ignorant to the situation, but mm. I was like, that's fucking awesome. And they're yeah. going there providing, you know, essential items, whatever it is, you know, and they go around checking temperatures, giving pills, you know, in some cases giving shots. Yeah. You know, I was like, wow, man, what a crazy scene. Yeah. I mean, and there's um, there's also the regional task force on the homelessness by the county of San Diego who goes out and assists local um, police departments. Um, but usually what they're trying to do is create a safety net to have them, for example, get some services, get some SNAP benefits. Um, if they need housing, if they have children, um, they usually will get them vouchers so that they could stay at hotels. Mm -hmm. um, so those are a lot of those things. Um, are provided through, um, you know, community-based organizations like South Bay Community Services, the YMCA, and all of those. Um, so if you are in a position like that, um, you know, or you know somebody that is that could maybe just need some help to get back on their feet, because I think that a lot of it, too, is underhoused, right? There's a lot of students, even at my daughter's school, who we were, as we were leaving, we could see that, like, their whole van was loaded up with all their stuff because they're living out of their car. Um, and so I think, like, if you know of anybody that's struggling like that, Sometimes, you know, they're they're already under house. They're already they shouldn't be sleeping in a car. Yeah. But if they have children, especially there's so many programs that the county of San Diego offers that um, I understand there's stigmas around that and all of that. Um, but even if, um, you know, even if you are undocumented, you can absolutely get services without it being reported to um, Stella looking at you. Go go on over to, to voice of San Diego dot yeah. com. V.O.S.D. dot com. They have voice they, of San Diego dot org. They, uh, dot org pardon. they have. Ample information and yeah, articles yeah. that they've written in the last six months. Actually, even further back for the pandemic, uh, mm -hmm, I was reading mm -hmm. one specifically about a family who lost their job yeah. during the pandemic, had to move subsequently all their savings into purchasing an RV. Yep. And then the RV was no longer allowed to park in certain areas for yeah. a certain yep. amount of time. And, they, have and they started towing park, it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's bananas. L Lisa Haverfeld does a wonderful job covering that epidemic. And I, I, they've got a great squad, man. I was able to in, uh, attend one of their member coffees recently. And it's, God, man, it's it's... It's exciting to see people come together, but then when people start reporting on like the shit that's happening, it's like, wow. Why are you trying to terrible. impress me today, bro? Why? You're, you're, you're over here just like saying all the good shit you do. Bro. It's <laughs> like, you know what, man? All I did is I you know signed what? up for something. I didn't do anything like, good. Uh, sometimes, bro, I just do a lot of good shit. Bro. There it is. You know? Yeah, but that's it right there. Voiceofsandiego.org. Go on there. There's links on how you can help. Sign up for their morning report, their newsletter, because mm. that, that thing, <laughs> if I could say so myself, it dumbs it down for me. You yeah. know, it, it, it takes the news written as it is, and then it retells the stories to you in a way that's very easy to wrap your head around. And then it provides links on where you can go to help, what you can do. Yeah. Bottom line, they're, Scott Lewis and his squad over there, they're killing it. Killers. Andrea, killing it. All of them. Keats, Ash. killing it. Yeah, killing it. it. Keats is awesome, man. All of them are killing it. We're big fans of them, man. I, I wanted him to come back in because I was going to tie this in, but... Justin and the YMCA won that award for their solidarity. Isn't team. that crazy, bro? Yeah, man. He texts us right before it was happening. He's like, as he was on the Zoom call, he's, he's like, hey, guys, get ready to celebrate. I'm about to win some shit. Yeah, and he's man. like, well, actually, I, they haven't voted yet. They're about to do it right now. Yeah. So recognized for excellence in community engagement. So That's awesome. Shout yeah. out to David. Justin, David Baker. Yeah, the Justin YMCA Lipford. squad, man. Like, that's incredible, man. Like you said, we roll with killers, dog. We yeah. roll the fucking squad, and it's awesome to see somebody in our group. And Profit. Like and that. Don't forget Profit. <laughs> oh, they have the glasses. Yeah, they I think he's um, been to the warehouse once. Professor. <laughs> Professor hey, Profit, bro. <laughs> Challenge moment of the week for you, sir. I always feel like such an idiot when I bring my Chales and my Yahweh's and shit because you guys are like spitting real news. I forgot I'm he was just here. Like, this what happened to me this week. Fucking, uh, you ever think? I know you guys are like, probably not as bad as me, but like, you ever think like you got addicted to weed? Like, what? No. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> we know you're addicted. <laughs> but like, if you think, like, yeah, this weekend, just kidding. <laughs> in the clinical term, they're like, if you use this shit every day, like with alcohol, they're like, you're an alcoholic. Like, okay. Do you use weed every day? Are you addicted? Where are you going with this? Do you, is this going to be a nice little intervention for, for all of us in here? For <laughs> all of us. Yeah. Well, no. Literally the entire no, we got room. sponsorships to keep, motherfucker. We're doubling. <laughs> has has like your com. tolerance gone Toker down? Tuesday. I mean, up or. When whatever? I got sick, <laughs> yeah. I didn't right. smoke or anything for like two weeks. And I thought, I was like, man, that's the longest break I've ever taken. Like with, with booze. You guys yeah. see me I take like dry months all the time But I'm like with weed Like I don't even think about it I'm just yeah. like fuck it Let's just keep going But like 
Interesting. These are the kind of things I think about late at night. I'm like, fuck, should I like slow this shit down? Like, Where you, you guys know me pretty well. Like, well let me, <laughs> I'm going to bring this to the table. If you're, if you're asking me, yes. Yeah, slow, I have a problem. slow down. Slow down. Not only yeah. do you have a problem, it's an issue. <laughs> guys, oh, this is an intervention. Guys, yeah. everyone gather around. You're probably the one who's here today. <laughs> no, but I mean, honestly, I feel like Old legitimately, times. like, oh, yes. <laughs> you're okay, bro. You're, you're fucking fine. Bro. You're fine. All right. I've seen you be a dad. You know, I've seen you be a, a fucking husband. I've seen you work. You've seen me be a musician? All high. <laughs> you know, the, you're high in every time that I see you do this, and you're pulling it off like a stud. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, but how do you know it's a problem? I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but I was just like, yeah, I was just thinking about it because I saw like this stupid fucking Vice article where like, weed's not addictive. I'm like, <laughs> reading is bad for you. That reading is not yeah, Reading is bad What's the longest you've, you've gone without smoking weed? <laughs> 16 years. And then once oh, you okay. found it. <laughs> 16 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I never no, smoked. Like, I, when I don't, when I get sick, I don't smoke. Like, and I've taken time off like back in the day, but like it might be time for some more time off. Good, man. Mm. Give me all your weed. Leave that shit that you brought. Leave it all here. Uh, I'm going to get to the end of it and then I'll take some time off. <laughs> <laughs> Look it. I've, and I've said That's this before. I, I was never like a pothead fool. Like I, I, I never smoked. I had, I was the asshole that'd be like, hey, why are you guys smoking? You don't need that shit, bro. That's You're lame. Like, don't do it. Not even that. I didn't say that. It was like, that's well, lame. the crime dogs that <laughs> take a bite. Of- <laughs> <laughs> then I met my wife. <laughs> and, oh. and that's all she did. And I remember like our first date, I was like, yo, if you're going to smoke, I can't be, I, this isn't going to work. Dude, douchebag moment right there. Jesus. Yeah, I was like 20 and shit, bro. You know, never smoke, drinking, do can, my thing. Can I take you to dare class? And then when we were married, you know, and, and I was 26 and I think she was like 24, 23. We started smoking every day. Every fucking day. I said, you know what? What's the, what's the fucking stigma here? Let me smoke. We don't have kids. We're both, you know, we're, we're thriving. We're doing our thing for like either she was she had her business and I was working in finance and banking. It's like we're checking all the boxes. We're right. doing everything to be, you know, up stand-up citizens of our community. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just law-abiding citizens. And you know, like we're, we, every day, every day. And then she got pregnant. And then we, we stopped completely, you know, because yeah. I was like, that was a, for me, that was the biggest trip, having a kid and then smoking because it's like, oh, fuck, what do I do if, what do I do if there's an emergency? I'm going to be fucked, you know, so yeah, I, like, I completely I stopped. Emergency room high so I, I, I stopped, yeah. you know, and then I, but then I slowly came back. It's like, well, let me see if there's an emergency. I just have one toke. Let's see what happens. <laughs> what kind of emergency are we talking about here? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and then I just started up again. But wifey, man, I think she's only smoked like three times in the last yeah. 11 years, 12 years. And for her, because she used to smoke a lot more. So, I mean, if you have fun with it and it's not altering your lifestyle in the negative. And I still have rules about it. Like, I obviously don't, like, fucking smoke with Pete anywhere near me. I'm almost like, Coward. whatever, you know, mm-hmm. like, but. Via Zoom? How do you guys smoke together? Via Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you guys hey, get in hey. high? <laughs> These guys don't shit. No. Because I've seen, I've seen little Pete fucking roll blunts with one hand, bro. <laughs> while fucking gra- <laughs> I'm like, damn, fool. <laughs> oh, man. Where'd would... you learn that? <laughs> Probably from this guy. He's like Fernando. <laughs> yeah. Now, Fernanda doesn't even smoke. That's why I'm like, I think about it more. I'm we like, almost got her know. to smoke on Saturday. <laughs> we almost did. Yeah. No? Nah, no. Bad, she man. she does. She has, but like, she doesn't, you know? Yahweh's. Uh, Yahweh's, Yahweh's. Sheffy. Yahweh's. Sheffy Dahmer. I gotta go first every time. Yeah, ladies uh, first. <laughs> so, Panera. Um, Panera. Uh, apparently. So, I'm, I, as you guys know, I'm like a really big caffeine person. I love my coffee in the morning. Um, I, and I love all things caffeine. Uh, but Panera, a Panera customer just went viral after realizing that her lemonade contained more caffeine than four espressos. I'm in. How did, <laughs> I'm in. Wait, how did she figure that out? Well, she finally looked it up. TikToker Sarah Baus, uh, at Sarah Baus, has gone viral after sharing her explainer on, on Panera's mango yuzu citrus charged lemonade is what they're called. Fuck. Now, First, why drink something that ridiculous name? Because it's Christ. delicious. Is Have it? you ever had it? No, no. It's so good. No. Um, My, but imagine me on fucking caffeine, bro. It's more than two <laughs> words, I don't drink it. Miss Doug, you'll never. You have to put me on a leash, fool. <laughs> well, anyway, she went on to TikTok to explain that this like favorite lemonade of hers has over two hundred and sixty milligrams of caffeine. Which That's is a lot. insane. Is that a lot? Uh, yes. Yeah. So let me give you an ex- example. Yeah. An espresso has sixty-three milligrams of caffeine. One espresso shot. All right. All right. All right. That's so, so, in a, so That's one, an ample amount of so one, caffeine. <laughs> My edibles so one, are usually a hundred milligrams. Yeah. One oh. grande latte. There she is. Look. One grande latte has two shots of she caffeine. She looks cracked out. She's like, <laughs> let me tell you about this coffee. <laughs> a venti or something like that at a normal coffee shop will have three shots. This has over four shots Fuck of, yeah. of caffeine. So she's like, she's like, I thought like I was like just having lemonade. I didn't realize it had that much caffeine. Um, and it's funny because she starts off by kind of saying, 
Let's just push aside the fact that it has 82 grams she of sugar on top of the caffeine. Fuck, bro, look at her. Look at her. She's looking at her. She's like, yo, this shit is lit. Yeah. If I could order two at a time, motherfucker, I would. I was like, <laughs> I drink one of these and I run to her. Oh my God. And yet I usually go on the express lane because I can't stand with these slow drivers. <laughs> Oh my man! Uh, but but what yeah. is he? That? Give her some water, fool. Seriously, <laughs> but eighty like, grams of sugar though. Like you think about how much in the cup that would be dude, of just sugar. Oof. And that's why it's my Yahweh. It's like you know, for example, the other day I, I looked at my like, you know, what, I'm not even gonna say which one, but my favorite cup of coffee. And then Starbucks. I like saw, I saw how much sugar it had. Plus the caffeine, I was like, dude, what the, f-? you know, like it was insane. So now I've just reverted back to what I always drink, which is Starbucks. my Americano, oh. which is watered <laughs> down button? espresso, Starbucks. watered down espresso with my Splenda. Cause I'm like, dude, it's crazy. Like one of these is like 700 calories. You can go someplace um, and get black coffee that's with sugar. That's a lot. That's a, lot. Fucking, a, coffee? a coffee? I try to eat less than 1,400 calories a day. Imagine. No. That would be like half of your calories for no, the day. Ta loco. So, yeah. So, anyway. But that's yes, why I'm working way. out. <laughs> he must work out. Do you need a Do you need a pick me up? Do you need a quick kickstart to start the day? Carol's. Follow me for more <laughs> caffeine tips. <laughs> Carol's caffeine is- corner. <laughs> anyway, Sarah Ballas, thank you for sharing that information. It's a Yahweh moment for all of us. This shit is the bee's knees. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Um, I, I just, I love watching the, uh, the exciting world of Elon Musk. And, uh, <laughs> is that what we call it? Yeah, man. Uh, he, now he's banning, uh, promotions of other social media platforms on Twitter. Like you can't, oh God, this you guy. can't, yeah, man. It's, and everyone's just shitting on the guy. I just, I, I just love that <laughs> every other day he seems to dig himself into a deeper hole. You can't be the richest cool guy in the world. He's full. not the richest anymore. That's you can't thing. be a top fucking, you know, you can't be one of the top three richest people in the right. world. And expect people to like you. <laughs> well, I ain't mean, no he, one gonna like you. He, what? A few years ago, everyone was hailing him as a genius mm. and as a, as a philanthropist for giving not only like you know the technology behind what drove the Teslas to work and succeed and thrive, and now nobody wants anything to do with yeah. it. You know, he's showing up at fucking Qatar with fucking Jared Kushner or whatever fucking. Trump's little fucking damn it's like him and Kanye heel, when he yeah. listens to the podcast. Him and Kanye went to the same party, the cookie party, and then Giselle <laughs> came out all <laughs> twisted after, like, you know what we should do, fool? And then <laughs> now they're all off the rails. Yeah, bro, it's just I, I just I love it. I love watching the free fall of uh ego maniacs. Really? Yeah. I believe absolutely. the Germans have a term for that, Schuldenfreude. Bless you. Mm. Like, well, did you hear just, that he had to reinstate some of the people that he suspended? And that's like, the thing. it's like he suspended, he suspended some, um, uh, some really huge names, um, in terms of, uh, in terms of being reporters and stuff. And one I think was from CNN. The other one was from like, from like the LA times right. and like a New York post. And anyway, they had pretty much shared, um, an article pretty much sharing what was happening, uh, just it, factual information with information that's available to the public right now. But because it was, because he decided that he didn't want anybody to know where his plane was, they oh yeah, he blocked that. He guy. blocked he blocked <laughs> all of those people and suspended them, and everybody started giving him backlash because isn't Elon Musk like Mr. Freedom of Speech? Well, everything that was the whole platform he he like brought up about like buying Twitter. It's like you, oh, think, yeah. he, you think he regrets <laughs> buying Twitter now? Claro que yeah. sí. Hell, forty four billion. I think dollars? he regretted it before he even got it. Tell you and what, they told I regret him. selling look it. That's for look sure. See, look at it. Bro. Drew Harrell said, "I never posted your address." Okay, well that. Skipped along you quickly, but uh, but yeah, it's it, like it reading the names. Makes, Come on, it makes absolutely <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense to remove somebody when nobody posted your address. They just posted the information that where they could find it, and it's like that's not you can't. You know, and by the way, he he I guess had offered that person that created the website uh-huh. that follows where Elon Musk's plane is. He had offered him only five thousand dollars well before, Oof. like years back, Oof. and the person said no. And so now he's like the most famous because, of course, now everybody's like talking about this thing. He should sell it back to him for forty-four billion dollars. Well, see there's if he can a do guy that. that bought like a bunch of websites. There it is. We posted a link in the course of reporting about Elon Jet. We posted links to Elon Jet, which are now not online and now and now banned on Twitter. Elon Jet, like. Can you get any yeah. douchier? <laughs> <laughs> this Elon Jet, this Elon car, like, come on, man. Like, I don't call Elon. it BJ car. Oh, that'd be weird. That'd be weird. Welcome to the BJ wagon. 
It is una pinche mañón. Maybe he's so pissed off because he sold all his properties, and he like, I don't own a house anymore. Now he's like, I live on this fucking jet. Oh man, and he's even getting fucked with that comedian on comedy shows, bro. Fucking oh, bro. Show. Why would Chappelle bring him up, dude? You're <laughs> for content. Yeah. For content. <laughs> he's waiting for someone to come up and just slap him. Oh man, that, that's everybody's, crazy. Everybody's clowning on Dave Chappelle right now. Like, why are really you looking bad? at me with judgy eyes? He's still the funniest <laughs> motherfucker because, in the world. Because you know you're. Mm-hmm. you're Go ahead. You're a big fan, so of Starbucks. No, that's you. No, no, no. Of Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Look at that. He's awesome. How but do you he know? Got, like- he mentioned <laughs> he got booed. <laughs> so they said he got booed for like a solid five minutes. He uh, couldn't get a word out. Uh, what, what did he say? I'm rich, bitch, to finish it off. Did he really? Yeah, I think that's oh, what he said. Yeah. He Dave oh, Chappelle man. or Elon? Elon Musk, oh, my bro. God. Oh, man. He's like, yeah. he's like the he nerd. Said it's so weird. You're like, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a he's South African accent, right? Yeah. Weird. Oh, man. People don't like him. People don't like People are very no. quick to, not quick, but warranted. But when they don't like you, it's on. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Like, do you see a world where Elon Musk is ever popular again? Do you, People uh, have very short memories in the United States. So mm-hmm. possibly. He also has a lot doing like if, natural. If he, if he like, shut the fuck up and like stayed off the radar in PR world in about a year, you can come back normal. Well, like, what you're was talking the poll that you showed us earlier that. He, he's asking people whether he should st- step yeah. down. N- 19 hours ago, Elon Musk posted a poll that said, should I stay on Twitter? Uh, I will respect your wishes. 17 million people have post, like have actually chosen one. And it was 57% said yes. So is Elon Musk yeah, leaving Twitter? Oof. One third of those were in Russian. Yeah, they were all bots. <laughs> <laughs> Well, supposedly he killed them off, so he can't, he can't even complain about yeah, that. Yeah, anymore. exactly, yeah. exactly. And he just yeah, he's he's being such a hypocrite, and I think just people are just enjoying shitting on him right now. Do you think he cares? Yes. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. he's so yeah. vain. Yeah, bro. Yeah. He's still out there at the world's most viewed event over the weekend. So he's like, it's like, and he was out there just like, hey, look at me, guys. So I don't know, man. This way, like, maybe he's like some wired. Obviously, he's wired differently. So he had Panera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your way? That was it. So yeah. my Yahweh is I almost huh. died this week. What? I what? got super sick, man. I was like, and I only get sick like once a month. One, once a month. Once a year. Once a year. But I get <laughs> sick, and I'm one of those sick. sicknesses that'll get you. And it's like for a whole day, I'm just out. And I was mm. out. I got to 104 degree uh, temperature. 104.4. Yeah, bro. bro. It was. I was. I was on a sick one. I was I, a sick ass <laughs> fool. I was, I, was, sick uh, I was under the covers and taking pictures and sending them to work. I was like, "Yo, I ain't coming in, dog." And they're like, oh, "Okay, you do look like shit." And I was like, "Yeah." Did I? I don't know if I sent it into the group chat, but yeah, man, you I sent, felt you sent us a thermometer. I felt horrible, man. You were hurting. And I was real. I was thinking because I had a lot of time to think. I went to sleep at nine in the morning after work on Thursday, uh-huh. and didn't wake up until like Friday at like noon. So I yeah I slept like for thirty six hours man I was drugged up and just sweating and, and fucking tell shaking. me about those dreams <laughs> oh fuck I had some crazy dreams I like theraflu so I don't know if that plays a <laughs> the same trick on That's other people you know but then other people started hitting me up oh Nyquil does that shit for me at nighttime yeah yeah um I started I started having some crazy dreams bro and I thought I was gonna die because I was dreaming nothing but dead people. <sighs> Like dead homies, dead family. I was like, what the fuck? I started hanging out. The, the homie Dwayne was there. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? He's like, I don't even remember. I was, I was telling Chris, I said, I should have written it down. But that, it freaked me out because I was asleep that long. I didn't leave the bed. And then I finally, I just get up and I was like, oh, my back was sore, bro. I was, it was, it was like Jeez. I was learning to walk again. Yeah. And I started thinking, I was like, how did this start? Because I do get sick and I get over it, but it's a one day and it's usually a spot. But this one's like super bad. I never used to get sick. I yeah. never used to get sick until like I was 30. And then when I turned 30, El Compa Gus and his wife, my wife, we went to Cancun. And we went to Cancun and I had pneumonia. I had no idea pneumonia was time. It was a long time ago. Pneumonia. Yeah, it was like during Pinchy Swine Flu. They were quarantining oh, no. people off of the plane getting in there. And I was drenched. I was just like, wow, wow, wow. That time is the first time I legitimately got sick. I got super sick. And ever since then, I feel like I get like something every year. Once a year. Once a year. And yeah. it's always around this time. And I mean, mm-hmm. it's no surprise. It's like 40 fucking degrees at 12 in the morning yeah, and it's cool. raining. You know, so every year I get sick around this time and I take a couple of days off. But God damn, I was, I was bad, man. I was in bad shape, man. I was in Cancun with walking pneumonia when I was 30, right? Like I was telling you. Partying, popping, fucking just whatever the doctors were giving us down there, the pharmacist. Oh, shit, who knows? Way, y que regreso. My doctor's like, bro, you're walking pneumonia. It's like, there's no way you should even be up right now. Like, you should Bitch, be I got like, dancing yeah. pneumonia. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was bad. I, I was out for like a week after that. <laughs> man. I'm going to respect sicknesses now because fuck, wait. It, there's nothing worse than feeling incapable. I lost a whole day. I lost Chef Claudia day. You know, like I completely was 
out of the loop for that. And I came back and it was like three, two days later where it said, my day was his day. I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, like, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like that shit. But it was like fucking two days of nothing. That's scary. Your body probably needs yeah, Your body is just telling That's you like, like yeah. hey, bitch, slow down. Yeah, and, and, and I enjoyed it, man. Don't get me wrong. Wifey would like, don't, don't go bother your daddy. Don't go bother it. And then people would come Aww. in and open one eye. Like, What's going on? Like, oh, no, I don't want to talk They to throw that. a rose Boom. in your bed. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> and then I started thinking like, I was on it. Like, those pills just, they sent my mind on a little downward spiral. I was like, oh, man, what does it feel like to die? Me and Jim Morris in a Jesus. car, bro. It was fucking yeah. crazy. Don't take any baths. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Friend. But I came out. Like, look at me now. Uh, look, look at me, me now, now huh? huh? This is coming in by clear. tribal, baby. Just coming in clear. <laughs> All right. You have a Yahweh? We're going to go straight to break now. You tell me. My Yahweh is the price of pinky rings. What? Oh, shit. I'd like to let you scrubs out there know that uh, when you reach a level of <laughs> pinky ring. Take it easy, Elon. What the fuck is shit? <laughs> but I didn't want you guys. Caesar and I, we decided pinky rings, this is the thing. So okay. we didn't want you guys to be left out. Either. Oh, you got me a pinky ring. Oh, that better be cool, bro. Got you guys both. So this is Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, you're, you're doing Christmas shit. This right. is next week, fool. We're still going to have a show. <laughs> oh, wait. I won't be here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's see. All Throw right. that over. What do you got for me? All right. So, first of all, I got a bag. Since you're so into Shane's. Oh, look at Shanes. that thing, bro. <laughs> i never seen a Shane ring before. Shane ring. So we thought these were, guys, these were for you guys. So cute. On the perro. And Miss Chef, we didn't want to leave you out. We got you a Shane as well. Oh, you guys are so cute. Well, well, Does it have to be on the pinky? Look at that Sorry, pole. it couldn't be as awesome as ours, but this is fucking. Nah, man, this shit is. Look at this. This, this looks fucking fierce, <laughs> bro. <laughs> you gotta get Casas one fool. Uh, no. Damn, you guys are horrible. Casas fool. has a little spoon on his. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Say well, James Brown. <laughs> Get on up. <laughs> Let's go. Ahead. If he has a dainty enough finger for this, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into a break. And when we come he can back, the Rolex wing. Ooh, With the Rolex the wing. Yeah, dude, check this thing out, and then throw it to Casas. <laughs> This is, right. I'm not gonna tell you guys where to get these, but you want a Rolex Shane ring? Hey, dude, this is so a cool. Rolex yeah. ring. I want, <laughs> want this one, man. I want both of them. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Boom. Hey, let's take a break. Break, break. Let's come break. back with uh, Carlos Baez of the world famous B side, -side. players. He's gonna come back and share stories from the road. And what is guitar too? Oh, I saw a guitar. Oh, look at that oh, guy. Oh, what's up? Oh, 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 tribal. We know the same people. We'll be right back. The wonderful people of My Grito with their My Grito Weekly. Brought to you by My Grito Industries, the big bosses, El Compita y El Compita. They did, I think they heard me earlier. They heard me earlier when I said, you know what, there might not be a, a weekly Grito report because I didn't get anything. And then I swear like two seconds later, a homie sends me a text and it's a short text. So here it is, the short text <laughs> for these guys. My Grito Weekly. As we near the end of 2022, we wanted to take this opportunity to thank Steve. Oh, shit. All right. And Emo Brown and everyone involved in the Emo Brown Podcast Network. Uh, he is a part of the podcast network for... Uh, I'm so reading three this thank yous to Steve. Yeah, so I see thank you. I see <laughs> thank you. We are excited for 2023, and we hope you will spend all of the holidays and the New Year safely and with your loved ones. Thank you, compa Oscar and compa Rob. It's been fun. Let's see what happens in the new year, man. How's Maybe you'll get your shirt. I hope so. How's your music going for the new year, bro? It's good. I'm working on a new plan for next year as far as like uh, the cover gigs and shit go. Mm. I'm going to start mixing in an iconic album. And I'm just going to play it front to back. Like I'll do like Dookie, the Blue Album. You're just going to redo the them? State. Yeah, just like oh, acoustic like yeah, shit. Because like <clears throat> I do most of those songs anyway. I was like, if I just do the whole album, then I can like pitch it as like, hey, come watch me for like the first couple hours. I'll just be doing covers, originals, like getting loose. And then like for the last hour, I'll do this album. Kind of like fun. emo night, but acoustic. Mm. <laughs> Dude, people like you. That, 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 it doesn't it surprise, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. But I mean, it's just people really are drawn to what you do. And yeah. you describe yourself as a Johnny Cash blended with a little bit of Blink 182. And you like that. Hmm. All right, whatever. It is, okay, you know? Like it or not, that is what I is. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that because today we've got a professional musician as well. A real one. Uh, you're a fucking real one, bro. Take it easy. We have another local legend. <laughs> I feel like we've been hit with a lot of like local, like, top-notch players, bro, recently, you know? And in the music field. Today is no different than aquí el compita Carlos Baez of B-Side Players. Yeah, 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 yeah. Long time Long no time. see, compa. What's good in the hood, man? Uh, man, it's been a uh, fun year. Fun year for me. A lot of 
ups and downs, a lot of devastations, but also a lot of eye-opening, awakening, traveling. Traveling. Um, traveling is important for me. Yeah, man. So that's a that's where I get a lot of inspiration and a lot of time to just get, you know, get lifted to that time to write to write lyrics and get inspired, write music. Give us a little background on Carlos Paez, on fucking B-side players, the origin story for those because we've surprised, believe it or not, there's people that listen to us now. So I want them. I want to start bringing all the people that I've brought initially, bring them back because it's time to give a lot more shine on people that I look up to, man. Well, my story is just like border kid vibe, you know, like I, um, my father was a famous musician from, um, people know him from La Banda Recodo and Los Moonlights at Tijuana. Los Moonlights! So the Los Moonlights is what kind of how, how my mom met my dad, like I guess in, in Los Congales de Tijuana back in the day, Los Bailes. Yeah. And, um, so that's where they met and, um, at that time my dad was doing a lot of traveling, so... My family, on my mom's side, is from Tecate, Colonia Downey. Tecate, saludos a todos los la gente de Tecate. And um, so that's where my mom is from. And she met my dad, of course, in Tijuana. And they, they hooked up. And, you know, I came through. And then, um, so my first, uh, the first seven years or six years of my life, I lived in Tijuana. In la Tijuana. Was. La Colonia Libertad. It was a, wait, 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 wait. Alto bajo por uh, I was in the, I think I'm in the ghetto part, like the bad. I think Parte that's, alta, entonces, yeah, yeah, fool. That's where, that's where my, my mom's family's from. Uh-huh. Well, that's where they ended up, you know, setting down anchor. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of, no, I said, there's yeah. a lot of talent in Colonia Libertad, musician wise, too, man. Oh, yeah. That's pretty awesome. And so, yeah. And so I remember, like, going to the Los Ensayos de los, los Moonlights, really young, and like bands like, you know, lo, like Los. Solitarios, Buki, Los wow. Diablos would stop by. If they were in Tijuana, they would stop by in the studios. Mm-hmm. So, so, esa época de música, wow. that era is like, I remember, I remember the records, mm-hmm. I remember everything as a young kid. There was only one option for you growing up uh, with a mu- famous musician father, man. Like, I mean, yeah, it was, but as far, like later on, I, I did, you know, Rebellion came and I didn't want to play that music. I never wanted to play banda. I never wanted to play... Um, like my uh, musica bailable and nothing. I wanted I wanted to do my own shit. I, you know, when I was a teenager, um, so that led us to San Diego, to National City, where where uh, our first casita that my my family bought in National City, and then uh, we later on moved to Chula Vista, like um, I think in junior high. So for the rest the rest of my uh, my Chula years, Vista guy. I planted the the flag in Chula Vista. So. Well, growing up, man, you were in the band. You can get to right now. B-side players. Everybody was your cousin. Everybody, Everybody was your cousin. It's like, oh yeah, Carlos from B-side. That's my cousin, fool. <laughs> oh, Carlos, that's my cousin. I was like, I, there was not like one person I didn't run into that knew B-side players. Like, yeah, Carlos, he's my cousin. That's my cousin. Mm-hmm. You became a local legend, now, bro. It's just local, local playing. Um, you know, in the in the local scene here in San Diego. Yeah, it's a small town. San Diego is a small town. You know, we never got, we never became that Seattle that that they they predicted it was gonna be, or we never were like the LA scene where like like you play one show and next thing you're you're opening up for Santana. And mm. San Diego was never like that. We always uh, the musicians here work hard and and yes, there's more opportunities away from San Diego, but that's a you know, if you want to go to LA and make it, you gotta go to LA. You have to go to LA and. It's a hustle, man. It's a hustle. It's, that's nonstop work for you. How long have you start? How long have you been in music, professionally? Uh, I think it's close to, uh, around thirty years. Nice, wow. bro. Oh, fuck, yeah, master so. at your craft. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and it's it, it's been like a it's been a it's been a fun vibe. Uh, like for me, I have a lot of stories, a lot of music stories that that I, that you know. Just being on the road as young kids, like back, like for us, being like an eight piece. Nine piece Chicano band from San Diego. Um, we were like out in the road. We, this was back in the days when no cell phones, like no social media. So, you had a street when, team when, flying. When, bro. when you're like driving to like Bozeman, Montana, like you gotta, you gotta get the big ass map from like, you know, 7 Eleven or whatever. And you have to like, you got you got to work your way there. You know what I mean? Like you got to find the route. Find Hope the, you don't miss an exit. Like oh, the exactly. whole trip yeah. starts over. Different days, different days. And, Thomas Guide. It was an, the, a necessity in the glove compartment. And the promotion was like flyers. Like yeah, that was it. Days. Yeah, flyers. You know, and the promoter had a lot to do with us. 
So the way they promoted us was like nine piece Chicano band from San Diego. Boom. And then like people were like intrigued, like, what the fuck is this? Like, so we'd show up and be fucking all kinds of white people fucking just ready to go, ready to party. Like in the mountains, like we did a lot of mountain tours. You know, wherever what, there was a white mountain, like we played, um, you know. BJ was there. White mountain. Colorado. <laughs> Colorado, like Vail, Breckenridge, Steamboat, Crested Butte. Dude, Aspen, the Jasperas have houses in Boulder. all those communities, bro. Those, Go ahead. Those communities, Bound right? To, yeah. That's when, like, it was all the, the snowboarding was at its peak and, like, and people were just partying and, and they wanted live music. And so those were the good old days. This is like the, like the late 90s, like the late 90s, early 2000s. And then, and then the the jam band scene came. The hippie shit came. Fish, um, String Cheese Incident, Galactic, all these bands. And these then, guys. We, um, we were part of that. We were part. The only reason why is because we make we were playing like thirteen to fifteen minute songs that were was dance music, and people love that. They just want to dance. People just want to dance. Vibe music, bro. Vibe I mean, you music. Know? And so that so that like led us to just. Like, go on the road with, um, you know, like, main acts, like uh, Bob Marley and the Wailers. Jeez. Not well, without Bob Marley, of course, the Wailers. Um, we did, like, you know, a good year doing national tours nonstop. Like, as a nine-piece band, getting, like, 500 bucks to just play 45 minutes. And that was, so you play 45 minutes, you rock the crowd, and then what do you do? You just party and, and go watch the band. You, you can either, like, party... Or you can go watch the musicians of the band and study uh, how these professionals play their instruments. And that's what I would do. I would, like, pick... I'm going to pick bass today, so I would watch the bass player, you know, Family Man. And just study, like, the bass lines. I'm like, oh. Next day, because it's every day. It's monotonous. You're watching the same same show. So the next day, I would pick the guitarist, see how he skanks, see mm -hmm, how he plays mm -hmm. the guitar. And then, so from that tour, you know, Ben Harper... Ben Harper for like, you know, three months off of Ben Harper. Now you're going with like um, the Headhunters, the original jazz, like Herbie Hancock's band. Dude, how intimidated like, to fucking open for a band like that? So man. these cats are just the heaviest in yeah. funk, funk and jazz. So now I'm like studying, you know, funk. And I'm 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 a, I'm a young kid. I'm, you know, I'm in my early 20s and I'm I'm like that was my that was my school. That was my college days of and I was studying this music that that I was just like, oh my, I can't believe I'm watching these people that I have their records, you know what I mean? Like heavy. And that's how B-Side was born. And that's why B-Side Players is like, and I think it affected us back in the days when it was about like marketing and about selling records. Um, it really affected us being a band that played funk, reggae, soul, salsa, Latin, like, you know, our they just didn't know how to market us. There was no... They, they wanted to make a record that was just one sound. And you couldn't even be bilingual back days. That was a no-no. Like, no way. You either make a Spanish or an English record. You can't can't do both. Damn. Mm -hmm. And we were like, fuck you. Like, this is... Let's just let's make our own records. So we did, like, half Spanish, half records. All our records, all our catalog has always been like that. And this was before, like, Ricky Martin and all that shit, so... Damn, before he was living the Vida Loca and shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I just always remember growing up watching and it was always like B-side players. I'd every fucking, you, you guys were playing pretty much every weekend. Every weekend. <laughs> and it said, also Matli, opening B-side players, man. Because I feel like that was the group that they, they everybody would compare you guys to the most. You know, because they, they were that kind of band, a party band, uh, a vibe band. And you guys I think, fucking I think we it. have a, a, a similar sound, of course. Um, we have a same sound because of uh, of like the environment that we both came from. Like Ozomali did did a lot of social, you know, conscious music and B side players, same thing. So I think um, a lot of places we go because Ozomali they did start um, after us, but a lot they really hit fame like a really big coming out of LA. They had more opportunities being in movies and. You know, you're in a movie that that stuff like people watch the movie and they're like, oh man. So it takes you to another another bigger audience. So a lot of places we went to back in the days, they were like, you guys sound like Ozomali. Yeah, we mm -hmm. got that a lot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's it's not to me, it, it's not an insult. It's a, it, I love Ozomali. So yeah, I worked with them. So that's my those are my homies. 
And shouts out to Raul, the guitarist, who I just did a show with um, not too long ago. We did a show in um, Watsonville. Watsonville, that area over there. Oh, man. There's a lot of B-side player fans in the Salinas, Watsonville. That's like, the Central Valley? Yeah, yeah, that's like that's if you if you want to like really listen to the lyrics and really get into like the profound message of the band, that's where they get it because those are all uh, kids that come from like farm worker familias, you know, that's where Cesar Chavez, you know, organized Las Marchas and so you know, it's not like Barrio Logan, of course, we have our history, Salacranes, Chunky and and all that and um but um all that up there is like they get the lyrics they get it a lot of people they don't even they don't even know that we have like a message behind the music because it's just party music so people don't don't listen to the lyrics they just want to dance but the ones that do get it then it it does like those are the best compliments for me it's like oh man I, this song means a lot to me because of my grandpa or because of my family and this and that those are the songs and then they go, mean something. They mean they, something. They've got some sort of value behind it. It's just not, oh, that sounds cool. You know, oh, that sounds that sounds nice. It's like, no, it sounds nice, but it's it's got a deeper layer on it. Yes, for sure. Is that frustrating when people don't understand? Like when, no, when you not feel like at they're all. not listening? No, or? not at all, because I, I like the party. I like the party. I love the party. <laughs> and I'll my, drink to that. my job <laughs> as my job as like as a musician, like I've I've always been thought uh taught through my dad and through you know, the, the elder musicians that I worked with, to them, like, um, we're just servants of the people, you know? Like, the, uh, a musician is like, a, you have to think of, you have to humble yourself and be like, you're a servant of the people. Those people are paying money to come and not not worry about their problems, mm. not forget about their day-to-day, forget about their nine-to-five, and just have a good time. You're providing yeah. a time out. Yeah, and, and, my, and I was never that person that stopped the music and, and was like, you know, I want to, I want to talk about global warming, right? Nothing, none of that. I just had it in the lyrics. The lyrics are there. If you want to, if you want to hear my message, then you can listen to it and and get intimate with the lyrics. But my number one job was to to make people dance and have a good time. That you've done an excellent job. Mm-hmm. I feel you, yeah. you. You've killed it. You you I mean, you've been nonstop working even through the pandemic. I remember doing live uh, the the live streams at the brewery. You would come in and do some stuff at the brewery, yeah. and it, I mean. You learned how to hustle. You learned you yeah. learned how to do new things during the pandemic, and I feel like because the musician lifestyle is not an easy one. It's a it's a it's a passion filled one. It's one that's driven by like you know what I'm going to do this because I want to do this, not because of the mm-hmm. paycheck. When the paycheck comes, it's like fuck yeah, that's a bonus. Especially the pandemic, man. That, those are dark times. Like if you we look back now, and like there was. There was no. Um, everybody was uncertain of what, what was happening. We didn't like, know what next the day would fuck's bring. Going yeah. on? The like, least hopeful time and, I've ever had in my yeah, life. Yeah, and and you're like, okay, as far as a, a musician or an art, like an artist. I mean, anything, a bar owner. You you don't know what the fuck's going on if you're if you're done forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or or like if you have to start fresh, you have to start a new career. Yep. Or what's going on? And so then I was like, okay. We, me and Eric, we started doing these live streams yeah. and just kind of like, hey, man, let's just keep it going. Play music, you know, and people really appreciated yeah. that that little, you know, two hour session. And you did that shit on the regular, dude. That shit was awesome because there, there's that's like, how can I stop playing? Yeah. Like, if I stop playing for two years, then, oh, man, I, I don't think I would have been. You I find would, something I would be else. Here still. No, yeah. I would I wouldn't be here. I would be in a depression that's like. Like the thing about musicians and artists, man, like the thing that makes us happy, like on the real is playing music and doing your art. Like when you're home and you, it's, it's just you, you um, people don't like to talk about it, but artists and comedians, whatever, when they're not doing their craft, it's some dark shit. Some dark on. times. Some Too much time to time. process because most people that are doing these things, musicians, yeah. comedians, whatever, they're doing it to have an escape. Yeah. You know, like, all right, you know, it's time to turn off the reality with my real life and start doing this. And, but when it's gone and you're focused and you're forced to focus on what's really going on, a lot of people don't want to see what's going on in their yeah, life. A lot yeah. of people don't want to look in the mirror and, and, and address those issues. Mm. Pandemic did all of that shit. Yeah, I said, yeah. fuck you. You're going to sit down and you're going to learn about yourself today. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it, man. And it, was a, it also was like, for me, it was a good time, too, because as far as a, being an artist, that was the first time that the government 
actually like acknowledged you and was like, hey, we're going to give you you guys like a monthly like unemployment. Artists, musicians can't get unemployment. There's no way you can declare yeah. how much money you make yep. over the table. There's no way. There's no way. So that was the first time that we got some assistance. How did they uh, get the, the, the parameters of what they were going to give you guys then? Uh, it was based on like your like taxes your, the last year. Yeah, your self, yeah. essentially yeah. your self reporting. Oof. Yeah, so we made the minimum, of course, but it's all good. But something's uh, better than nothing, right? Yeah, it was. For some people, that shit was a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, Barry Jess Barrow. <laughs> NFTs. Dude. Yeah, and so that that kept us afloat, and and um, but the the live streams was really good because people were like, "Hey, man, thank you so much, man. You uplifted me." I te va 50 oh, bolas, carnal. Quieres, 50 bolas, eh. Thank you. Keep doing it. Yeah. That's why we kept doing it because people were like sending, you know, being generous and sending tips. And I'm like, Eric, help me, help me do this right because I was doing it all Wi-Fi and uh -huh, like, uh -huh. like, it sounded terrible. But so, then it, it got awesome, man. It got it, it yeah. became a part of like my week. You know, I would see you on there and be like, fuck yeah, compa Carlos, boom, he's doing his thing, I'm washing mm -hmm. dishes. And then there's that little donate here, but I was like, fuck, all right, boom, $5. I'm poor, yeah. dog, that's all I have. <laughs> all right, you said 50, okay, yo tengo cinco, bro. I got five, I was like, no, I hey, got five but, but I was doing it every time I got on. Yeah. And he and he was always on, and he was like, yeah. chance, and I was like, oh, man, yeah. it, it made you, it made me feel special that, yeah. you know, yeah. I would write and be like, kick ass, keep it up, bro. Uh -huh. And then, boom, he would respond, hey, what's up, chance, la, la, I was yeah. like, Fuck, that's that's my and, guy for and life also, now. Also, the podcast game, man, really like started evolving heavy during that time. I know? feel like you know, obviously the, the pandemic was a horrible time for a lot of people, yeah. and and it still is. You still the 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 after effects of of what has happened for like the last two years, and yeah. arguably still going on. Yeah. You know, people learn to hustle again. There was a great control alt delete as it relates to passion, as it relates to creating something. That's what we did. That's what yeah. you did. You flipped your game, bro. You flipped it and you went on live streams. Mm -hmm. We flipped it and we started doing more podcasts, just talking to more business owners because that's all we were. We were business owners without it. We didn't have our Thomas guide, you know, because this is a road that was never traveled before. It was, it was just a fucking, what's going to happen tomorrow? We don't know. Are we going to open? Fuck, I don't know. Are you guys open? It's like, as of right now, we are. You know, we, we don't know what's coming tomorrow, what kind of new mandate it is. It was crazy. Yeah. You either learn to sink or you swim, I, bro. I, I, and so, like, that kept me really busy just playing and also practicing. Like, at that time, I'm not really a guitarist. Like, to me, I, I've always been, I stuck to the singing. Of course, songwriting is my thing. And then I was playing the trumpet for B-Side on the Road. That's it's a really hard instrument. So I kind of stopped playing the trumpet. I lost my chops. And so I started picking up the guitar. I've always used the guitar to, to you know, write songs as a, you know, that's the only way that I know how to write songs, minimal chords and this and that. And so when I started doing the live streaming, you know, I invited like musicians like Brian Jordan, one of my favorite cats. I do gets down dude. And this cat is like one of the heaviest guitarists. So here I am playing guitar with him, just trying to keep up like and just trying to give him like just like basic chords so that he can fucking rip it. And that just... That was like work for me. So like it kept me busy. And I was at that time, like I was so busy, not not like focusing on the negative and the world is ending and the darkness of shit. Of course, I have kids. So I, I knew that they were fucked. I'm all these kids. My kids are fucked because they're going to two years. They're not going to fucking go to fucking um, to the school dance. Their fucking sports are done. Oh, my kids are fucked. You know yeah, it I mean? reshaped them the way we look at things. Yeah. You know, it took away a lot of the and things that we're used to. Social skills, yeah. like I'm all fuck, dude. Yeah. Stay in your room for yeah. two years, yeah. motherfucker. You, bro. That's real, man. That's fucking real. A lot it's, of kids. I have little kids, and yeah. and it's it's, it's crazy because you see some. One of my kids excelled, bro. Yeah. He said, "Fuck it." He, he he locked himself and read more books and did more things oh, yeah. and started building things. Boom. The other dude just said, "Fuck, I ain't doing shit." You know, he went into the kindergartner. He came out a second grader from the pandemic. You know, <laughs> like he did a fucking a stint. A prison fool He's like yeah So he went into kindergarten He came out a second grader That fucker doesn't like To do nothing dog. He's like huh? no It way. definitely It hasn't had an effect On our youth And it's something That still to this day We don't know how it's going to affect them. It's too early, bro. Long term, yeah. yeah. It's Long too term. early, bro. It's still not even done, they say. It's too We're early. still not like, even done. Talk about generations like shit, you know. But um, so that made me think like, fuck, on another level, what are, how are my fucking compadres doing and 
in you know Mazatlan mm. in Tecate like mm. they're not, they're not getting no government assistance and they're not playing so I'm like what's going on over there like, Ta carnal está bien culero aquí no el pedo yeah. Yeah. este puros frijoles carnal yeah. este nada de chamba y no, no sabemos qué pedo so I'm like fuck it so I fucking um, I took the fucking live stream to Mazatlan and I invited like, you know, a couple, like six, seven guys and we did a live stream. And from there, it was, it was all fading in and out, like terrible reception, but it went through and people fucking donated like a thousand dollars. And so everybody, I gave them 150 bucks, like the, mus the musicians, and they were like, oh, no mames, carnal. Hey, we muchas gracias, we. Like, yeah, man. like 150 bucks. They were like stoked, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and and it's just like, dude, people are people want to hear live music, so like, you know, get ready and like get ready to start playing again. Don't don't stop playing, keep playing. Well, end of times is what we know that you yeah. want music. You want something yeah. to take your mind off a thing. You guys were like but the fucking were, musicians on the Titanic. Yeah. There was no way for them. <laughs> they're, they're like, the shit's all going down. These guys are like, well, you know what? I'm going to play Rosa Maria. Oh, you know, Nuestra Semana. You guys were doing your thing. And every show was like that. Because mm -hmm. it was a sense of like, fuck, we don't know if we're going to do this tomorrow. You know, we don't know if we're going to be able to continue to do these things. Yeah. And to this day, I mean, uh, I just got back from Japan. Um, I know Milo and Caro talked to you about that. And they just did you bring them, any whiskey back for or did you what did you I, do? Shit, I, I heard about you. I brought too much stuff back and I, I did a rookie mistake, man. I brought too much too much clothes. Next time I'm only gonna bring no calzones. Mete bichi, bro, no calcetines. Ropa. I'm only mm. gonna bring a pair of fucking leave a pair of uh, jeans, some tennis shoes, and a couple t shirts. Yeah. And then I'm gonna buy everything over there. Hyper yeah. on ah. Elon Musk Jr. No, over there's here. There's like Fuck, a little there's bro. like a little mercado, like a don it's called Don Quixote where you just buy everything like for cheap. Super cheap, cheap. T shirts. And the, the thing is like you wanna like like you wanna buy stuff that that they stole from us, that they took from us, like the vintage game mm. over there. They have all the vintage, all their stuff. Yeah. Everything. Snoopy, Mickey Mouse, see Everything Chicano. So I'm hey, trying to buy I'm Chicano trying to buy it back yeah. and bring it back to us. Cause that's what I'm gonna start doing. Go ahead, fool. Yeah. Damn, I felt some passion there. <laughs> yeah. Have you written a song about that? No, I, oh yeah, I do have a We're song about back that. The do you really? It's called Thrift Store Hustler. Yeah. Go ahead. It's about that. And um, because I've always dealt with the Japanese, but but um I've dealt with them um on business. They're, these dudes are business. Uh when I, I used to go sell at the Rose Bowl and um that's like the vintage mecca of like so i would want i would stock like uh my first time i did it like in 90 1990 i i went to all the thrift stores and i just devoted my shit to adidas jackets the adidas originals with the um, so the, the three so back stripes. then the 90s the 70s and the 80s was like the vintage it was so banging. I, I collected about 35 of them 35 jackets every color like the sickest you know, yellow with green, like Brazil, mm, like, mm. like the sickest colors. I, I cleaned them all. I, I set up 35 jackets and I had like about two pairs of, of, of Biggie double leg, like the original Levi's, the Biggie ones from the 60s. And some Japanese cat went up to me and uh, he's like, how much? Like holding the jacket. And I'm like, 35 bucks. I was selling for I sold him for 35. I was going to sell him for 40. I'm like, fuck it, 35. And he's like, how no, how much for all? Mm. And then so then. It's a crazy accent you get. <laughs> <laughs> Necessary. This is a, a, a uh, German, me, Japanese person. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow, no, they, <laughs> <say wait. laughs> no, they do have that German shit. That they, they, Go ahead. How go much ahead. for all? And then boom. So then I, it was like about $3,000 or a little more. I gave him a deal. And then he, he paid me in hundreds, and then on the last hundred, he fucking dropped it and he went, <laughs> like some sucker shit, fool. Like an evil guy in a movie. Oh. Like evil. <laughs> Dude, you know he went back and flipped those things for one hundred to one fifty exactly. each, bro. Yeah, because those those jackets are awesome. I have exactly. one at home. It doesn't fit anymore. But when my yeah. kid gets older, <laughs> when my kid gets older, I'm like, boom, you're gonna get it. That like, you're gonna one of you guys is gonna wear this, yeah. and it's a nice little green one. For, so I, I was like, oh, this motherfucker, that was evil. That was like a German laugh. Like, <laughs> some Hitler shit, you know? But 
And then, and then, uh, call him at the Kanye. Yeah, Drew, wash your mouth out. Wash it your was mouth. Dark. It was, was dark. That, it was uh, dark. All right. I think you So I understood, like, uh, okay, these guys, yeah, these guys are flipping shit back there. And so then when I started, wor- um, when I started hanging out in Barrio Logan with my business there, and they were coming and buying the lowriders and mm, shipping them. Yeah, oh, yeah, fuck. yeah. Okay, this is. And they got deep pockets to make it happen, bro. They, they do. They, and when they I can went to make Japan, it work. And when I went to Japan and I saw all our vintage, every, when I went to these little vintage shops. You saw all your jackets there, fool. <laughs> I saw, you saw all your jeans. What the fuck? <laughs> I saw what they're selling, like a fucking little Snoopy doll from the 60s mm. for. Like shit that you find at a thrift store for, you know, five, ten bucks. I saw what they're flipping it for. So. It's just like, okay. Well, give me their number because I got some G.I. Joes to sell. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about the G.I. Joe shit, man. I'm, yeah, yeah, over there, probably not. Yeah. Nobody likes an American superhero like that, fool. Come on, guy. Come on, You'd be man. surprised. Have you heard of B.J. Jesbera? Yeah. Yeah. Barry Jesbera, the <laughs> cryptocurrency well, like salesman. Felix the Cat? Uh-huh. Oh, man. Felix the Cat. We're talking about old school, you know, yeah. like a different era. When cartoons were racist and shit, bro. Yeah. I you just, remember like, that? I saw, the, were, I saw the Mickey Mouse, the Disney thing. Yeah, the Disney shit was bro, on the fucking star, wall, man. It, I think it's still on certain... Certain uh, fucking apps for TV, they're on there, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, and you, and oh, you I, can YouTube it for and sure. I, and I showed it to the kids just to see what would happen. Nah, they, were, they were oblivious. But I'm like looking at wife in the back. I'm like, uh, the fuck did he say? He say what? Mañoso. Yeah, man. There's entire parts of their past that Disney has to, had to like <laughs> just wipe out. <laughs> Tell yeah. me more. So, oh, so the back to the Japan thing. One thing is like the respect thing is I, I really... Um, admire them for just being so respectful as far as like the streets of japan are super clean mm-hmm. and um and you know uh if for me i was i was more i'm more of a going to a dive bar and kind of just drink and hang out and vibe off the music that's what i do like i'm I, i'm i'm old man i only got like 10 more summers left you know what i'm saying and it sounds depressing as fuck but like when i do traveling now like, I'm not that guy that's like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, tomorrow we're going to, you know, Costa Rica, we're going to go climb up the volcano tomorrow. I'm like, ah, fuck that. I'm fucking staying at the bar. You guys mm. go climb the volcano. I already did that shit. You want to learn about the people in that, that neighborhood? Shit. Drink at their bars, bro. Yeah, you go to the their bars. spots. Like Oaxaca, I went to Oaxaca. We're going to go to, the, you know, to the pyramids, like Montalban. I'm like, fucking have a good time. I already did that shit when I was fucking in my 30s. To me, I go somewhere, I want to go to a nice bar that has vinyl, DJ, or live music. Mm. That's my shit. That's my happiness. That's what I'm doing when I'm traveling. Mm. So in Japan, I found those spots, those vinyl bars, really small. It's like this, this small. Like the bar is this big. Only about six to ten people can come in. At a time. At a time. Bro. So Intimate as fuck. And the, the guys I... What, what do you want to drink? Fucking serve your drink and then go back to the. Hey, in San Diego, multitasking, bro. DJ All the bar. hats. All wow. the hats, man. They don't and have space like, for two things. They're just and like, then <laughs> he would he would put the record right there so everybody can see what he's playing. And I'm like, oh my god, these dudes are playing some shit, dude. Like jazz. As far as jazz, I have a big jazz collection. So, like jazz, funk, of course, big in Japan, but um, reggae is huge. I went to some reggae bars and. And they were playing. Like, you know, you go to our reggae, big ups to, you know, Tribe of Kings. I love Tribe of Kings. And, but um, you have to go early to hear the roots. You have to go early, like right when they open up and they play some roots. And then later on, it's just dance hall, all dance hall. And my friend Omar Lopez told me Jamaica Omar dance hall. <laughs> but like, but like in, in Japan, they're still into the roots, you know? So it's like they're playing the old roots, like, and it's super mellow, chill. And yeah, you after a while you're like, fuck, let's, let's I've never the, been to Japan. How are they? Are receptive to to foreigners, Mexicans specifically? Like what what's well, the what's have, the culture? You, what's the what's the vibe, bro? Well us, How long is the flight? <laughs> Before we get too excited. Well, that's brutal. It's brutal. It's like fourteen it's hours. Brutal. Yeah, it's brutal because like for me, I'm my body's just old and yeah. cramping up and mm-hmm. it's like woo. Uh and it takes a couple it takes a good day to just get back to, you know get back to it and but yeah you don't even want to think about the flight that's the worst part yeah, yeah. it'll forever be the worst part man yeah. but yeah. you turned this passion it, it, into a monetized business bro you have you have an actual uh, uh, collect san diego vintage collection 
¿Cómo um, se llama el Oh, yeah. My, my shop and body Logan. And for, I don't know what's going on, but lately, recently, it's going off. Like, people are into uh, gifting vintage now. And before... It's that Gen Z right Dude, now. I, yeah, before, yeah, like, Christmas, you'd be like, what the fuck? You got me a used jacket? Yeah. Like, nah, now it's like, shit, you got me some shit from the 70s? Yeah, yeah for sure, you know, man. Like, this, this new generation, like, like old record, generation. like, you buy someone a new record from Walmart and Target, it's like, fuck, but you buy them an old original pressing? It's like, oh, my God. No, pues sí, but that with, with original pressings come a cost, my friend. Yeah, so a lot of this shit is expensive, bro. That's what I'm saying. But the vintage game is is huge now. You go to the swap me now. Kobe's is just all vintage stuff. It's all kids selling vintage. Um, you know, everything that's like even shoes, like the shoe game's crazy. Um, everything's being, being, uh, being redone like a... Everything, the shoe game, they're bringing all the old school, old school tennis shoes that we used to wear, all the old music that we used to listen to, all the toys. The toy game is crazy. The and toy nostalgia game. is very powerful. Nostalgia. <laughs> Dude, I got word. a friend that collects fucking video games, bro. He's got my video coll- video oh. game collection online on Instagram, and he's always like going to swap meets early. And he says, it's, it's one thing to just buy what you want, but it's another thing to search, find, and actually find it in the wild, like going to like a Kobe's early mm-hmm. and purchasing these things. Recently, he said, he's, he's been telling me a while about the like the golden grail of video games for Nintendo, yeah. something called the Samson, some shit or other. It's a video game that's like $1,500, bro. Yeah. They only made a limited amount of it. It's like, so in every little, in every little like fucking passion filled hobby or whatever you're doing, there's like a top tier level, yeah. bro. You know, mm-hmm. there's that Adidas jacket that's cr- probably going to cost like $250. And people jump into it. Uh, th- again, I feel like the pandemic is one of those things that led into it. Not only did it recycle a lot of things that we used to do as youngsters, it also like put a, a I, I know a lot of baseball card collectors now. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of dudes collect fucking 29er BMX bikes, bro. The card, like, the card game during the pandemic, the card game got crazy. Bananas. Bananas now. Yeah. So people were buying all the cards and it's it's like, man, that's not going to be sustainable. Yeah, and it is. And a lot of these prices on, on cards have just dropped. But fashion, you can wear fashion. You can't yeah. wear a fucking baseball card around and be like, oh, that's Watch cool. Watch me try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like wearing a spinner of your favorite bar. Look at that. <laughs> but yeah, man. And I knew Japan was on top of its game because Japan is, you have to think of like London, you know, New York. Japan is up there. All the Stussy. I can't wait to go, bro. All Fuck. that. All, the fashion is all around you, and the and they take it in to another level. And everyone's dressed clean, man. Like New York, everyone's not dressed clean, but everyone has nice, nice shoes on. Nice them. kicks. Nice kicks. New York, the walking. New York game's crazy, <laughs> but in Japan, everyone's clean from head to toe, and their fashion, even the work, the worker, um, the work field, like when people go to work. Los blue collars. They're, they're dressed fucking nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice suits. Nice. They like us though, bro. Mexicans? Like they like travelers, foreigners? They love Mexicans, dude. They love Mexicans. Hell yeah. Um, the, if you tell people you're Mexican right away, tequila. <laughs> you know, everywhere we go. But yeah, and and uh, and they love Mexicans. They um as far as like the Chicano thing. Um, I saw, I got to go, I was with Bobby Tribal, so Tio Bobby, and and we went to a, a, a car Bobby. show, but it was more like a, it was more like a hot rod car show, but of course, like the, you know, the Chicano influence was there, like the, the low ride, there was a couple low riders, a, co- a couple old bomb, bomber, Bomb-up. bomb cars, and then also some nice paint work, so yeah, it's, it, there, the, the Ch- but we all know the Chicano influence is huge. In yes, Japan. sir. And it's a it's there's documentaries. It's not gonna about die. It. It's not gonna die. It's gonna get bigger. It's gonna we get should bigger. go, man. I want to go with somebody who's been there. Casas, you been to Japan before? You have to take me five times. Ah, perdón, perro. Shit. He just dropped five dicks. Fuck. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. One on his head. But yeah, man, I look forward to going with somebody who knows what's up. Because everybody who's telling me that's gone, it's like, nah, you got to go with somebody who's from there. Yeah. That's part of like your, your little circle or something. Or just go with homies that have traveled there before. Because they're going to show did, you the I real didn't know Japan. Shit. I didn't have anyone. I didn't have anyone. I just, a la brava. I kind of just did my own shit. But um, I do, I'm not here to promote anything, but... Uh, this is like something that that I did, and I recommend it to wherever you go. Uh, for those air people at Airbnb, you can buy like an experience on Airbnb. I don't know if you yeah. guys are hip. Yeah, yeah. Like you, 
wherever you're at, no matter where you're at, Oaxaca, fucking Japan, you you buy the experience. And um, this cat that we did, he met us at a Starbucks, and he's all, orale, I'm going to take you guys to where the locals go. Oh, yeah. Where the yep. locals That's go eat ramen. Dude? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 And, and that, they're and they're pretty affordable. Like yeah. some places, and depending now, on the city, they're like thirty bucks. Yes, some of them are like seventy five bucks. But it I depends on the city. And yeah, and I did a hundred dollars, but it, in, it included all my costs, all my alcohol, my food. Yeah, and he's I'm gonna take you to the best ramen, like the yeah. locals. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna teach you how to eat. Hey, over here, when you slurp, <laughs> he's all. That's the shit. That's, that's like, respect. That's respect. Yeah. And I'm like, what are they? Even even when he wasn't at restaurants, he was yeah. slurping. Fucking guy, no, no, because yeah, I always got in trouble. My my mom can slurp around. Yeah, yeah but not that. Or or the or the dipping of the bowl. Yeah. It's like so they don't have spoons in Japan. No, no, you have to like lift the bowl to your face. So yeah. all this stuff we couldn't do with the menudo and all that, you know, the pasole. Yeah. Mm. I was mm. like. Mm. <laughs> Uh, oh, that was some chocolate milk, like, <laughs> and then uh, uh, yeah. also he was like, oh, "I'm gonna take you to to a real whiskey bar, like the real yeah. whiskey." And yes. there were only Shit. only five people standing standing only, and the the guy, did you, he, we didn't. Even, I was like, "I'm gonna order this." I'm, no, you don't order. We're gonna bring it to you. You you drink what we give you. We made a whiskey <laughs> highball. Oof. And I Japanese got highballs are the I best. Got yeah. On the highballs, yeah. Highballs are the best. Oof. Nothing like a good Japanese eyeball. And so then after that, we're just walking around. He's all, you see the DVD right there? I'm a, it's like all these places says DVD, 24 hours. I'm like, what is that? He's all, that's where you go. And like, okay, you can either go for 90 mi- uh, 60 minutes or you can go all day. But that's where you watch like porn all Whoa. night. And you could just jack off, whatever. You got your own little booth. Go ahead, go ahead. Sometimes you got to get your thing. So a lot of people... Do they do pedicures there? Because I know a spot here in fucking Chula Vista (laughs) that does some shit similar. She's my new sauce. So he's a lot of people, they work like late hours. And uh, so they don't want to go home. So they just go... (laughs) They come here... For two hours and then they go back to work. And I'm like, in two hours, that's a commitment. Wow, dog. Two hours and all right, whatever. Hey, fuck up. I don't know the culture. I'm in. I'm all in. (laughs) With my wifey. I'm going with wifey. (laughs) Chivato, let me hear you play a song for us, bro. And I don't want to just, I keep seeing you do that. And and I'm like, fuck, what's he going to play? What's he going to play? What you going to play? Oh, man. Well, what are we feeling? Oh, first of all, I want to give you, I want to give you a gift uh, from my homies from Ilegal Mezcal from Oaxaca and Los Angeles. Uh, These guys have been really helping me out. And I know you got sponsors. I feel like they're, they're a sponsor to us because... Whenever I ask them um, for botellas, they send them to me. And uh, so, yeah, that's a gift. That's a Christmas it, gift hey, to you. Thank you very much. Maybe Pinchy we should Carlos, do a little bro. shot. Maybe we should do All a right, shot. All right, who's going to open this? I mean, yeah. we just share it. Just pull it. Get your knife. You just pull it, man. A ver. Just pull this. She always, when she wants you to do this, she calls you Miko, bro. <laughs> Chef is, chef, is, chef is quick to fucking Nico you up. She's like, hey, Mijo, um, can you go take this to I was like, see? I like that word. I love Mijo. That's a really... That's a very mom thing. Yeah, really mom family thing, but don't ever call like a veterano. What's up? In, That's what I was going to say. Like, in Logan, a Mijo. Oof. Really? Why? Oh, That's like the worst thing you can do. <laughs> or way. Don't ever call some old school cat way. All right. Let's, let me see your glass. But we're going to have a little bit of a mezcal legal joven. Mezcal artesanal sin prisa. Without uh, hurry. Damn. Bro. My favorite was when Ilegal Mezcal did those uh those t-shirts. Did you see them? The, the Donald that is un oh, pendejo. Oh, the Trump. Yes. The Donald that is un pendejo one. Would you like one, Chef? Yes. Yeah, all right, all right. I love mezcal. Mm. Anything peated and delicious like that. Smoky. Smoky, yeah. I love smoky. Oh, malo. This all is right, the perfect man. place for you then. Yeah. Let's hear it, man. <laughs> A cheers, a cheers to Carlos, man. Yes. Big fan for a long time, and can I can say that we've been friends now for a while. Hello. So thank you for that. Oh, Appreciate oh, it. Oh, you didn't get any. BJ I don't, didn't get any. I don't get he it. hasn't filled plastic cups apparently. <laughs> mm. Damn. Hey, we no mames. It's so good. What did you give me? <sighs> um, it's not smoking. Because that was horrible. Yeah. This right here was amazing. Well, he likes you. Fuck yeah. Dog. <laughs> Look at that, dog. Oof. Oh, it's good stuff, man. And. And they they got a good story too. Um, these people are, they're pushing it. Me and Eric go to LA all the time, and um, they're they're that the contact that we call when we go to LA, huh? Renee Renee um, Banuelas is the homie, but 
Again, awesome. Gaza's got a contact everywhere. For Gaza doesn't go to LA. LA comes to him. We're gonna put this <laughs> because uh, we're drinking. So. El mar en la esperanza nunca muere. Tus besos y mi amor nunca van a cambiar. Yo siento que Dios me ha iluminado. Me ha dado letra pa buscarte sin parar. Porque fueron tus padres tan ingratos. Separaron de tu amor. Te veo donde quiera que yo ando. Con solo el pensamiento de llorar. Yo vivo como una ave desplumada. Que le falta. Los maniacs, bro. Look at you, man. I ever, just, you always bring a smile to my face. Just, just hanging out with you. Every time you come in, you're like, get on the champs, get on the champs. That's fun. No, though, that's a good song because uh, people talk about like lyrics and and um, I like the old classics because they talk about you know like the ocean. Like yes. uh, me and me and uh, me and Casas, we're about to go to Mazatlan. Uh, like to start the new to start this 2023. We'll be in Mazatlan, and this is a place that we love, and and um, that's it's a, a place where you're like in tune with the ocean, like it's one the malecón más largo de todo México. Yep. So you're just driving, and the ocean's all around you. It's an essence that's all around you, and you feel it. Mm. And of course, you know we do the the mariscos, we do you know the you do it chiles, up. the ceviches, and we party, we drink, you know, we drink our pacificos. Um, we drink tequila and we have a good time, but the ocean, so the lyrics, like the ocean, like these lyrics, when you sing about the ocean, it's like, all right, that's beautiful. But you also hope, el esperanza is something about, like, if you, si no tienes esperanza, if you don't have hope, that's something that right there that can uplift you no matter like who you are, rich, poor, um, you know. It doesn't matter. Hope, you have to always hope. So those are the lyrics right there. Like, I'm not really in tune with the lyrics of today, like the songs that are on the radio. I, I've never drank scissor. I, I've never, you mm. know. I You're missing out. I it's never too late. I don't quite, have a Lamborghini. So I'm not in tune with, with, with the lyrics. Like, I see you in a purple one, though. Fool. Yeah. I see you in a purple Lambo. I mean, Mañoso with the lean and your little styrofoam <laughs> cup. It's about the bien scissor, bien 3-6 mafia. So I, I really love, I really love, like, Classic tunes, you know, my, my my whole shit, you know, like Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye's my shit. Nice. Just easy. 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 <laughs> Take it easy with Carlos Paez. Yes. Sha, 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 sha. <laughs> madre, madre, demasiado de este de llorando. Hermano, hermano, demasiado de nosotros muriendo. Tenemos que encontrar manera de traer amor aquí. A... Padre, padre, necesitamos que intensificar. Solo el amor puede conquistar Tenemos que encontrar manera De traer amor al planeta 
planeta Protestas de fronteras No me castigues con brutalidad Háblame para que pueda ver uh, What's going on? What's going on? Tell me what's going on What's going on? So, my theory is that Like the Smiths, you know, Johnny Marr being the guitarist. He was vibing off Marvin Gaye for sure because same chords. Transition same time chords. by Carlos Baez. Same chords. I was looking for a job, then I found a job. I never know some miserable now. Two lovers walking by. Intertwine. I never know the miserable now in my life. Why do we give valuable time for people who don't care if I live or I die? <laughs> hey, somewhere glasses are smiling right now. Oh. Me perdí en el momento, güey. Ah, Me perdí en el momento, salud. perro. Saludita. Damn, Damn bro. People, no, no, people the... don't understand. <laughs> But no, no, people don't fucking understand how difficult it is to sound good with just a mic. Like, he's singing, oh. playing guitar. Like, this isn't plugged in. Like, that's this fucking... It must be real song. difficult. I've been to your shows, bro. It's that guy <laughs> plug everything in. Yeah. <laughs> no, cierto. no cierto, bro. Te la rifas. Play Weezer again, ho. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, but you know what I'm talking people about. People do not realize how difficult it is what you're doing. Shooting nah. the shit, hanging out, That's kind of, talking over it, playing a fucking uh, we, riff, we doing your thing. We always had a Theo that would bring the guitar back in the days, and it was just... Yeah, but not everybody had Los Bukis or Los Solitarios showing up no, at their house. Yeah, no, bro. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm talking My about... Just like, white guys. I mean, ¿te imaginas, <laughs> hey. cabrón? Una peda con sus, bro, con sus parents? No <laughs> mames, bro. Los Rocking... ¿Cómo se llama? Los Rocking... <gasps> Los Rocking Devils. Los Rocking Devils, bro. Tijuana status. That's is. crazy. Uh, Corazones Solitarios, bro. Yeah. All those, bro. But that's, that's what I was talking about earlier when I, when I rebelled um, in my youth. Like, I grew up with, like, Jane's Addiction, that kind mm -hmm. of shit. That, that was the first band that really inspired me. I mean, God stealing! Yes, yes, but more more of, like, the the harmon like, uh, Perry Farrell, the way he drank, um, the way he sang was just, like, crazy, like, just... Uh, like the ocean. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just crazy. And then also just the music, the music, and that kind of music really, to me, I'm a... Papá, yo quiero tocar eso. And my dad was like, no, no, no. Mejor cabrón. toca esto, cabrón. Entonces, <laughs> la trompeta, cabrón, el trombón, el trombón, con el trombón. Si tocas el trombón, siempre vas a tener chamba. And I'm like, what does that fucking mean? And uh, yeah. it took me fucking 20 years because every horn player I know, every band's hiring them. Hey, let's go on the road. Hey, we need a trumpet player. We need a trombone. Those guys have work. Always. Yeah. Always. High in demand. High in demand. Low in supply. Oh, man. What was the first song your dad taught you to play? Or what was the first song you learned Whoa. by simply watching what your dad did? Oh, man. When me and my dad were not in the same, um, like, there was, for me, I had to, my dad would be like, do this for two hours. Just to, because my finger, my fingers are so weak and I was so young. And he's like, you got to make your, your, your fingers strong so that you can Rip. play what the fuck I want you to yep. play. And I'm like, fuck, this sucks. And I want to play fucking, I want to play songs, you know? So, so yeah, for me, uh, and, and like a lot of people don't know that um, I've always been into, my first band was like a band that was like a mixture of like the Stone Roses and like, and Jane's Addiction. Like I was really into the Manchester scene back in the days. Really cool songs like, uh, You know, uh, what was the band's, Eric? It was like Happy Monday, Stone Roses, uh, oh, Manchester scene, which... Gus has discovered the killers, so his answer will always be uh, the killers. Yeah. <laughs> the killers. <laughs> But, you know, like, I, I, I fucking... I like to learn these songs and kind of... And the bands that I like, I don't care what genre it is, but just kind of play, like, my own style. Like, you know, for example, like... Thank you. 
Yeah. You can sing a song with me. Oh, yeah? All right. <laughs> La mama. In many ways, I'll miss you. The good old days. Someday. Someday. Yeah, it's to say, but I want you to stay. Sometimes. Sometimes. When I was young, man, we had some fun. Always, always. Promises they break before they're made. Sometimes, sometimes. All my exes, I'm lacking in death. I will try my best. You say you want to stand by my side. Think I'll be alright. See alone, we stand together, we fall apart. You know what's going on. Think I'm crying, baby, do my heart. So I tables they turn sometimes. Someday. Barry just Barra, get it, brother. Ya no voy a perder más tiempo. That I love that fucking even, even though like the strokes Stop Come on You like, made him sound way cooler though yeah, <laughs> They yeah. sing it like You know Fucking garage Stop, bandy man. All dorky But this guy You don't know how excited You make me when you start Playing shit like this fool. You just start, you just sit down For those of you who don't know um, My glasses are on Because I'm high as fuck But uh, for those of you who don't know He was at our first Beanchy Backyard Boogie Him and Brian Jordan Came down Posted up in the back uh, The backyard of the Elwood and it was an excellent fucking time, bro. And they were playing all of... <sighs> Brian Jordan gets down, bro. Yeah, Brian Jordan's a cat. Bro, he gets down. Um, Fortunately, like, he's, like, uh, he's really now back to working. He, he That guy comes from the, the TV, like, um, he's on the Carson Daly show. Okay. Back on the days. And, um, and like, when he was doing heavy touring, uh, he was Carl Denson's band. Carl Denson being from... Um, the Grable All Stars, which he's also the saxophone player for the Rolling Stones. Oof, from San Diego, Oof. Carl Denson, big ups, Carl Denson. That's can you imagine getting drafted to the Rolling Stones, dude? No, can you, you can, bro. That 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 that's because you got to think at that level oh, of band like man. they are. They got their own little small circle of people of pool that they can dip Shh. into and grab, bro. The music game is ridiculous in yeah. that way. If you if you're it's good like, enough, people will find out, bro. So he was like, I, "This is what I've heard, and I and I think it's true, um, but I can't confirm." But uh, I to what I heard is Carl Denson was like, "Fuck, dude, thank you so much. Send me the music. Like I'll fucking start learning. I'll, I'll get ready for the the Rolling Stone shows. Huge." And they're like, "The music? What the fuck? Hmm? Rolling Stones?" No, nah, we don't have music. So he had to learn like I want to heat that. You got Spotify? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's like, you know, the biggest band right in, in American rock and roll. And he learned, you know, and he went on the road and killed it. And that's a huge gig, man. That's like I don't know, like that level of of playing is arenas, like, you know, uh, stadiums. That's huge. And um so Carl Denson is like that made me proud. I'm all, some musician, local Boom. musicians from right San there. Diego, right mm-hmm. there. Boom. But I know the I know the story of it. Also, um, a lot of people don't know, but Carl Denson was a, a Lenny Kravitz first record, "Let Love Rule." One okay, of my, one of my be- favorite records. Big Lenny Kravitz fan, and um, Lenny Kravitz took him on the road. And at that time, we had a a flute player uh, slash saxophone player named Harold Todd. That was living in um, in Ocean Beach and great cat, um, one of the best musicians. He was like tone deaf. He was, I think he he was deaf in one ear, so he had perfect pitch. Like uh, so, he would all, I'd be playing trumpet next to him, and he'd be like, "You're flat. Your A's a little flat there, Carlos. As long as you're on now, you're sharp. Side, you're, over here. <laughs> you're flat again. Like while we're That's playing horn lines, like he was like, "Fuck, you kept me on my toes." Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and like. But an awesome, one of the best horn players. So when Le- when uh, Carl Denson said like I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do the touring anymore with Lenny Kravitz. I want to pursue my own career. Um, 
Harold Todd right there on the saxophone, he t- he took he got the gig. I think he was referred. I think Carl Denser referred him. I don't know how he got, but to this day, Harold Todd is in Lenny Kravitz band, and he used to play next to me. Like three years, we traveled to, and I'm like, now I see him with Lenny Kravitz. I'm like, that's that's like the kind of shit that you know, like I'm like, oh man, that's one of my teachers, right? That's one of my my guys that inspired me. It's a mentor, bro. It's a mentor. That's somebody you can. And see, feeling, doing it to the next level. Yeah. So, like San Diego, a lot of people don't know, but a lot of musicians, when when they make it, get, come out of San Diego, when they leave San Diego, they go big. You know, yeah. they go big, and shit like that. Uh, it makes me proud that you know, he's one of the cats that like play flute and sax, and I really admire him. And he uh, also is on, like on a lot of my records, man. A lot of records, old records, and he's like. I'd be like, can you come record? You know, I'm down here in um, downtown at, at the studio next to Pokies, and come down Capricorn Studios and drop horn lines. And, and I'll be like, how much, homie? Like, hey, dude, like, I don't have that much money, but let me give you some feria, you know, for the work today. So pff, just buy me a burrito at Pokies. Done. Like that. Done. I'm like, oh, man. Like, Shout out to Pokies. <laughs> Shout out to Pokies. <laughs> I've had a champion. Let's get you to answer some questions. I know I know the homie over here has some questions. And BJ, uh, mm-hmm. also a musician, you know, he and I see him light up anytime a fellow musician comes in and joins him. So, I mean. Yeah, I love, I love learning from, like, everybody else's story, especially because, yeah. like, you know, you guys have, like, you know, gone places I haven't. Um, as a, You guys are seven-piece band, correct? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes, you know, up to nine-piece, ten-piece. And at the minimum, how many? Uh, two people like uh, like <laughs> yesterday. You're like me and a mic. Like last <laughs> night I did a me and a guitar. A, a Christmas party for you know, and they were like, we we can only afford two people, so let's go two people. Boom! All right, fuck. So yeah. my my question goes with the size of the band. Like when you guys first started, like really going after it, were you going as like this big band trying to get like yes. Full concert style stuff and like no, we was... our sound was inspired by big band, so all our music was has always been a big sound, horns, percussion. So that's what we we were, and back then we would never break the band apart. We just kept it as a big band, and whatever money we made, we divided it between all of us. And so that was our sound. So there was no way of breaking it down back then. There was it was always a big band. But was it like like booking a band that size? Because I know sometimes you, um, you hit up a spot and they're like, "This is just too many people." Like we always did the, uh, we were never like the hippies, like sleeping in the van or, or crashing people's. Uh, I, we always did the hotels, but uh, we were, you know, we always did two to a room, uh, double beds. Everyone had their own bed. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it'd be like three to a room if we really, you know, if we got. If it got hard, mm-hmm. but we were always a band that like, hey, we're we're gonna work, and we're gonna drive eight hours at least. Let's get a bed. Let's home. enjoy the yeah. amenities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's spoil ourselves but, a little. But bit. it wasn't it, that expensive, you know. When we we stayed, we didn't stay in like shitty hotel rooms. We stayed in like you know the, you know, kind of like a La Quinta kind of back then. It wasn't that expensive, shit like that. Um, you know, hundred bucks a night, whatever, for a double bed. But that's how we had a balance. We had a budget. Art, art. And yeah, yeah sometimes. it's difficult enough doing it as one person. So whenever I see like a big band, and I'm just yeah. like, man, you guys are like crushing it. I just want to like. But the merch game, the merch game is what how you take your your band to like uh, to pay expenses. Okay, all right, hell yeah, okay. Even okay. to this day, the merch game is probably uh, ranked supreme, second to none. No, it's a different game. Yeah. COVID has changed prices too. People sell t-shirts for like 24, 25 bucks. Like that's. Yeah, no, sweaters are what, 60, 50 bucks? I went to punk shows. These are punk shows I'm talking mm, about. Mm. <laughs> like, Shit, yeah, we like sell shirts at the like, Breaver yeah, like 25, 30 dollars, man. Yeah. So I can only imagine on tour what they would be like, you know? Yeah. And people buy them. People, yeah. I mean, the best, the support, best, it's a good yeah. way to support. Yeah. The best way to support is by repping your mm-hmm. fucking favorite bands or your favorite musicians' mm-hmm. gear, your, their merch, man, you know? Sense of pride. Bro. Yeah, that's why Sense I got the sticker pride. game on lock. <laughs> What's going on with B side players? What can we look forward to in 2023? Oh, yeah, I want to promote our show. In at the Music Box, uh, January 21st. Uh, we'll be at the Music Box with a band called Boostive, who I really like. Really, they're killing it. Um, good party vibe. Um, great band. So we're going to be doubleheading uh, the Music Box January 21st. That's going to be our first show of the year because we don't have anything left. Um, I'm doing some acoustic stuff. 
for New Year's. I'll be at like Saquon Casino and in in uh, La Jolla at a nice restaurant and uh and but um might as well promote we're gonna be in Mazatlan for the mm. uh the the whole band. And this is the first time in a, in in many years that the whole they're flying out like the complete whole band. Everybody, yes. Everybody. damn man. So. So that's, that's also in well, January. That's exciting. That's yeah, January. Jan, right after New Year's, we go to to Tijuas, We go to the airport, and boom, we're out. How many gigs are you guys playing down there? We're doing two gigs, two gigs, and then we come back just for a week. And Casas is coming with us, so you, Ooh, so you guys got to like champion. You guys got to do like oh, find man. a. Find someone to, to record you or something. Nah. Well, <laughs> when, when Casas isn't here, we just don't do anything. We're going to take a break on that one, fool. Well, I think we'll that's, a, that's, so, a, that's a day we take a break. Uh, <laughs> where, where are you so playing on that tip, On that tip, me, uh, Eric, the last time we were in Mazatlan, like, like, he, he's pretty famous down there. Yeah, yeah, I've seen videos. And he was just going down there, and like everywhere we went, he was like, like in the in Las, Las Pulmonias, the Texas, hey, then it's... Tienes Bluetooth. It's like, no, no. Ah, pues pon esta, pon esta rola. And everywhere we went, and every every restaurant, he's like, hey, can you play this song? And we're like, he was oh, just uh, blowing it up. And it's like. <laughs> everywhere we went, dog. And now they play it. Even the cover bands play it. I swear to God. Damn, Casas don't stop, bro. Hey, wey, vamos con las putas. Get it, perro. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, wey, vámonos con las putas. Nice. This is I a Casas guess. song through and through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Y te la vas a rifar pinchando mis putas. Damn. Is this our new intro song, Paul? Y te la vas a rifar pagando mi puta. Love it, though. That's great. Look at that. Hey, wey. <laughs> Vamos <laughs> con las putas. Hey, I swear to God, dude. Yeah, everywhere we go. <laughs> la mamada, bro. That's a banger. Oh, that's a banger. Man. Is that available on your Spotify, Casas? No, nah, no. Nah, that's, that's, that's a bad call. He's going to play it right now. What? <laughs> Private collection. The whole trip, this song, I didn't want to hear it when we got back. <laughs> and then they started sending us videos of people playing it on like, oh my live God, band. Oh. I'm not lying. No That's wonder amazing. you want to go back, dog. Look at you. <laughs> Fuck. They call him Perry over always there. Always a good time. <laughs> always a good time. Man, always I, a good time. I need to go back. I've only been there once. Wifey and I have been there once. I got to go back. I got to yeah. go back. You do have to Great go back. food, great entertainment, great yes. vibes. Always. Muer con este güey. Muer con este güey. No sabe, pero muer el pinche feliz. I'm going to go in that fucking suitcase with you, bro. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good... One pair of chonies. No chonies. Eric is fun. Like, uh, me and him, we have a good time. Like, him and I, we've been friends. Ever since I met him, we just have a connection. And not only that, but he's, like, done a lot of my videos. Mm. Like, he he gets it. He And he's he's, like... One of the persons, like, you guys know how talented he is on that level of videography. Gus has the God. Editing and all that. He's he's the man. He's the man. He's but blushing. Uh, he's blushing. But, but me, yeah. him and I, him and I, we have a good time. I can't, it's hard for me to travel with people, man. It's hard. Why? I don't know. You're I a traveling suck. man, bro. I, I know, but, like, um, I just... Me and my lady, we do good. We we travel good. My lady keeps up with me. She she can drink with me now. She ya tiene callo. Like she hangs with me. You broke her in. She's yeah. ready. <laughs> and but Eric and I like we're just like we just have a good time. Like he I came pre broken. Forget it. I don't want to travel with you guys. <laughs> just have, that shit already sounds over. It sounds intimidating, man. Yeah. No, it's not intimidating at all. It's just the vibe. Like you have to be positive. You can't be. You can't get like everybody. For some reason, when I travel, everybody gets on a down one, like one yeah. day, two days out of the the week. They, yeah. Oof. Okay. Spa give yeah. me some space. Yeah. Don't take Caesar. Yeah. Don't take Caesar with I you on those kinds about. of trips, fool. Like homesick kind of stuff? Or they just homesick get, like, or I don't know. Some no, just the troubles from anything. home, they bring them on the road. Yeah. I'm like, hey. Yeah. Like, I'm like a flower, bro. On the road, I blossom, bro. <laughs> I'm out there. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm like, wait. Yeah. Let me blossom out there with you, bro. 
That's going to oh, be a graphic shit, next week. It's, <laughs> it's a vibe. And then the vibe, like you bring, wherever you go, you bring it. Claro. You bring the vibe. Claro. And people, uh. people are like, they, they're like, I like these guys. Mm. Where are you guys from? Oh, San Diego. What's up? Oh, man. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Las putas. <laughs> a huevo. <laughs> Fuck, bro. Well, I, that I can I can agree with you with because we Gus and I when we've traveled, man. That's your cousins is my Gus. Yeah, you know we go. We anytime we travel together, we go always. We go everywhere. We've gone to Dublin. We've gone to London. We've gone to yeah. watch soccer matches. We've gone to Mexico. We've gone to fucking even as simple as Vegas, and it's always a good time. We don't argue. We don't yeah. fight. It's just it's just a perfect time. We vibe off each other, you, you know. And then we go. He sees me passed out as fuck. He just leaves yeah. me, bro. Oh. I see your hair. You know. He I see no no in the bed. Like he 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 oh, put me in the yeah yeah, yeah no no no, street, no no. You know I see him doing outlandish shit. I'm like all right fuck let's go. You know we take we pop a fucking like yeah. a little pill to wake us up, mm -hmm. and then we're good, bro. Yeah. We went to Dublin. We went to Dublin. And the same shit happened to us. They're like, well, where are you guys from? And we're like, San Diego. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're Mexican? We're like, yeah. Oh, bro. It was like we told them we had the fucking fifth golden ticket on Willy Wonka, bro. As <laughs> soon as we told them, yeah, we're Mexican. Oh, let me buy you this. I'm not even going to try to do an Irish accent. But oh, they, they were like, let me. I'll be let, like my Japanese accent. Hey, fuck, let me <laughs> buy you this fucking whiskey. <laughs> You see where I stood most, and we were it, bro. People were around us, just like they were. They were vibing with us. Yeah. They, they. When we travel, Mexicans as a whole, uh, I've look at the World Cup, bro. Somos un desmadre, dog. It's like you. Si saben cómo somos, pa que nos llevan o pa que nos invitan. Mm. But people want that shit. People yeah. want us partying and having a good time. Nothing is too serious. Nothing is too over the top. It's just we're out there having a good time. Yeah. Nothing is guaranteed in this life, as Nothing. we all know now. Oh, so it's like fucking go out, yes. do your thing, and just get Have on a sick fun. one, man. Yeah. Oh. Nothing's guaranteed, man. Yeah, we don't know how how much time we have on this earth, and and also, you know, we don't. Like nothing is guaranteed over time. Like our, your family, your loved ones, you don't know um, how long people have on this earth. So yeah, you have to have that attitude, and you have to like, you just have. And the best thing about traveling, by the way, is coming home to San Diego, man. Oof, yes. oof. Because you know the weather's gonna be fucking bomb, mm. and you, you know you got your food spots here. You can have the best tacos, dog, oh, in the world. That's bro. the best thing about traveling is coming home. Like, yes, because and we are so. But that that's gonna be the lead way to the next. Look song. at you, bro. <laughs> hey, look at you. So, look at you. It's like you know what the fuck you're doing. In the back of my head, is like, oh, I'm coming back to San Diego. It's like, este hueva cantar San Diego la verga. Mm. <laughs> Bringing the transition back to emo. Uh, so this is. When uh, Bobby Tribal heard this song, he was like, what's up, man? You gotta put this shit out. And I was like, fuck. Okay. You might also <laughs> recognize this for the Weather Weather Report. Hi, I'm the Weather Weather Report, man, and it's gonna be sunny in it's San Diego. It's gonna rain mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. You can use it for whatever you want. Use it, man. So oh, we do, you. fool. We do. <laughs> Don't worry. We fucking do. <laughs> San Diego. Love my San Diego San Diego Rifa San Diego Love the border to the barrio Love the parque for Chicanos Love the bridge from Logan Heights Right across to Coronado in San Diego Love my San Diego Love my South Bay culture roots Chula Vista 3rd Avenue National City where I grew I eat more brown, I'm feeling good in hey. San Diego But in the San Madre way Love my San Diego Where's that joint? <laughs> I bless my to every day the sweet sunshine in America's finest pueblo. Love my San Diego. Love IB North 75. Sunset cliffs, ocean beach drive. Love that West Coast sunset sky. Over the waves that we can ride here in San Diego. Love my San Diego. Love my Padres win or lose. Hey. 
Taco Tuesdays a salud Gas Lamp Club and North Park too Feed my mood while we all cruise through San Diego Love my San Diego I bless my everyday rise To sweet sunshine in America's finest pueblo Love my San Diego So thank you Lord For blessing my soul So proud to know I'm homegrown original From San Diego Love my San Diego Oof Oof Why do I love you fucker? <laughs> Why? Because I relate to everything you fucking yeah. sing about bro It's just very relatable it's there. It's it it's it's Sundays in the backyard at Carnesadas, bro. It's hanging out with your cousins, it's hanging out with your tios, with your family, drinking, reminiscing, remembering about when you were little and yeah. being like, what is it like to be out there hanging out with the older people, having a beer and just mm. shooting the shit and then actually being a part of it. Yeah. And then it's like, fuck. And then you start singing. Next level, bro. Yeah. You always kill it, dog. Yeah. We've been smoking that song for so long. Yeah. Now we're smoking to it in real life. It's crazy. We've smoked to that. I've smoked to that song a lot. And really? I smoked to Nuestras Demandas up, bro. I smoked to all. And then what else, bro? I remember going to PRC in the old uh, um, Pinchi Paradise. What was it? Project Rio Collective that Chicle and Selena had with their partners, mm. bro. And you playing there. And just going. Big and ups to Chicle. Always big ups to Chicle, bro. Um, always, always. Chicle was when uh, my son passed away. He was like one of those cats that he went to. Like, he did, like, a wellness check on me, and and I really appreciate him and his family. Like, he's one of those people that you, um, when you know him, when when he, when he, you know, when you get to know him, he's always going to be looking out for you. And Very true. And uh, I, I fucking love that dude. We're very, you know what? You have a song called Amigo, and that legit, when I have, I have a few friends in my life. You know, I have, I have Gus and I have Julio and I have Chicle now and, and some of the other guys in the crew, but legit Chicle, you have, I have that, my friends have to vibe with everything, not just one component. Yeah. And Chicle vibes with everything we fucking knew. Family, fucking passion, um, doing, starting something and seeing it all the way through until you fucking reach your goal, yeah. you know? And it's important to surround yourself with those kinds of people, of course, man. Yeah. Like you said, wellness checks come in many different ways. He checked in on you and, yeah. and, the. Very much needed time for yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. He checks in on all of us, man. That's that's the homie. Chicle, this is a Chicle appreciation little speech, bro. We love you, Chicle. Kind of. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Do you want to get into some headlines today or do you want to keep the party going? What's up to you? That's up to you. Yeah? Songs, yeah. songs, songs. As far as songs. I'm going to say, yeah. this is going to be like the longest fucking episode ever, but oh. fuck it. I don't give a shit, man. We're going to keep. Pass that Yeah. Where's it? No, you can't have this mezcal. Have your whack ass mezcal. I do have one headline. Go. I want to hear, 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 hear some headlines. Yeah, let's headlines. get a headline. Let's get a headline. I have one headline. One. Go ahead. This is my second to last show. Oh, shit. What happened? BJ, what the fuck? No, not you. <laughs> Caesar, what did you do? This is the second to my last show, so I will be wrapping up my. Um, my space here on the podcast uh, next week. So um, there's a lot of really good things coming. I have a lot of um, a lot of work coming up that's going to really require a ton of my attention. A lot of writing. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that's all I'm going to say. Um, and a lot of a lot of work. And, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for this time and I'm not going to get emotional, but si no, um, no te creo, I think like I've I'm so grateful for you guys because um I was going through a really hard time, and I know that you know that, Steve. And so um, I'm just so grateful because you guys came in a place when um, I felt like nothing was going right, and this felt so fucking right. And um, you guys welcomed me, and I'm so grateful for my time here. Um, oh, awesome. I'm bummed that this I This chair is I always there. Leave. We like, like, this chair um, is going to always be I there know, for but you. I'm not going to be around. <laughs> 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 then we'll uh, fill it with someone but else. I'm, Fuck. I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so fucking grateful for all of you guys. I feel like you guys have become like my brothers, and I know that I have that with you guys. And we're I, still gonna be here. We still claro, gonna be here. and I'm still I'll gonna still bust in airport. on you guys and drop some. <laughs> I'll still uh, wait for them cochinitos, bro. Los coches dorados, perros. Yeah. So um, a little bummed about that, but should um, we have people come in next week then or what? 
No, I'll be here next week. Yeah, no, I mean, no. Should we but, have people come yeah, in? Anybody yeah, anybody wants to come out and hang out and and uh, have a shot with me before y on my last night. You're gonna get on peda. You're gonna get on peda. <laughs> well, you guys are always trying to give me peda. Mm, hey, peda and hi. I don't, I don't smoke, and they're over here. Oh, I don't she smoke. Smokes. Hey, tell her what's going on right now. <laughs> if you don't smoke, you smoke now, my you friend. Smoke, yeah. <laughs> I know. Now but, you were, you you came in and you added a different layer to what we're doing, and you added some professionalism. Because believe it or not, we're not always know. professional here at Three, <laughs> at three Punk Ales, at fucking Evil Brown Podcast. You know, and we weren't. And you just you, you threw a little shine on us and you and you you played a big role in, in elevating what we're doing and, and getting unlocking the next level. We always talk about unlocking the next level. And I feel it takes the, the right keys and the right components to build that fucking bridge to get to the next level. You were definitely a big part of getting us to a next level. Here we are. We won't disappoint you moving forward. Maybe Barry just bear will a little bit. <laughs> but aparte de eso, it's like, honestly. No, yeah. Keep crushing it. I can't was... wait to see what you guys do in 2023. I mean, I think only good things can come from all of the craziness. Mm -hmm. To your point, I think this year fucking sucked royally for so many yeah. of us. Um, but I think through this kind of uh, sense of community that we've built and through all of the people that we've built, we made it through this year. Mm -hmm. But I'm fucking, I think we're all fucking ready oof, to crush oof. 2023. Say yeah. fucking again, because I'm in. I'm fucking in bro like, fuck this year mm. royally mm. but let's go let's yeah. go fucking I'm dying my hair red fuck it yeah. I'm going in let's I'm dying it. my hair red no <laughs> no way you know no. like it's just, you. Ooh, last year was rough whatever you're doing uh -huh. you have all of us behind you thank you, know? you. I love you guys yeah. thank you yeah maybe when I'm able to announce it, some what I'm actually doing I'll come back and ooh, and let you guys know I'll shit. pop in for like a little Q&A or something she bless us with some chef mm, <laughs> let's see what else do we got before we wrap this up that's a great way to finish it yeah I, and uh, i wish you the best i think you, like looking back i think everything like it's in, in chapters however you want to like and then life in life you look back and you're like man that was that was a chapter in my life where man that was positive that was Hell good yeah. but then i can't went from there to there and then boom like i i yeah. really started doing what i really want to do and i just wish you Happiness. Thank you. And, you know, that's the pursuit. Thank you, of bro. Fuck. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's never a bad time with you. For never. No. It's never a bad time never. with you. Oh, I mean, change is good, man. Yeah. Yes. Change is good. It's necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary, man. Yeah. Imagine being stagnant, stuck in the same place, doing the same never thing. Never that. Seeing the same faces, you your, know? Your eyes are really red. <laughs> Fuck, I will play. he works very hard. <laughs> I'm a hard working day. Estás bien hype. When Bianca like, is doing our reels, and, like, and color she'll correct, send me. Color correct. Yeah, no, she'll send me little clips. She's like, hey, fool, your fucking eyes are oh super red. I don't know God. how I'm going to fix it. I said, don't. Yes. Let it happen, bro. You just have Let it happen. <laughs> oh man, I want to hear some more music, dog. I want to yeah, smoke some yeah, more yeah. weed. I want to. I want to do I'm things, bro. I want to do well. things. A ver. No, oh, we're gonna have to play some reggae for you, All right. And that's super grief. Mm, A B C D E F G. No, no, oh, yeah. I'm still good. We're <laughs> good. <laughs> American citizen. Mm, saco la sentry. We're all good, oh, bro. Shit. We're all good. No pasa nada. Fuck. I didn't I, know he had all these ties to my plan. I'm like, okay. I love Can this I get dude. My hey, real, real talk. <laughs> I, I love this dude. Yeah. This, Carlos Paez, Carlos Paez is, is, is a walking talent. Yeah, no, a, oh a breathing gosh. talent. That guy's blazing. No, ese güey le valió pito down. Ese güey dijo, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it, it's Monday. Ya, güey. Fuck, bro. No, don't stop. Keep going, fool. Keep going. <laughs> Shit, you keep going. <laughs> now I don't think I'm that addicted to it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. Well, I guess we'll do the theme song to the Emo Brown show. Ooh. When, you, Ooh. Damn, when you asked me if you could use a song, I was like, hell yeah. And then and it, it gives me joy that you somebody uses a song and to invite guests, like people that I look up to and people that are inspiration in my community to me and their guests on your show. Mm. Um, you are the show, fool. You are the show. The, the show is community. The show is yeah, people like you. It it's is. comprised of so, people like you. I think people that, like Chef, BJ, Casas, everybody here, man. Yeah. And people love it because it's that. They connect to it because of you guys. So that's awesome. So, yeah. Damn, I am. My daughter sings this song and everything. Oof, it's oof. great. My little guy, El Oliver, le encanta. Damn, yeah. play this one. Yeah. Suena los tambores de la rebelión. Palante con visa mexica reggae en español. Como zapatista de liberación. La paz y justicia en nuestra misión. Con energía positiva, buena vibración. La fiesta y Mo Brown los invitamos. Sin armas, con palabras, con educación. Tenemos un anuncio para los asesinos. Ya no queremos guerra, destrucción. No queremos fronteras segregando el mundo. 
tiempo raza para revolución Luchando por nuestros derechos, nuestras demandas Nuestras demandas Derecho, tierra, trabajo, libertad Independencia, democracia, nuestras demandas Nuestras demandas de tu radio no vas a encontrar este movimiento solamente para la gente que quiere el cambio soldados zapatistas de todo el mundo los que defienden nuestra historia nuestra razón contra los ratones financieros de Babilón los que matan para controlar el petróleo ya no existe confianza en el gobierno tiempo raza para revolución luchando por nuestros derechos y nuestras demandas nuestras demandas Tierra, trabajo, libertad, independencia, democracia, nuestras demandas, nuestras demandas. So good. Estoy tan enamorado con... I'm just joking. <laughs> You had to fucking stop. I thought you were going to transition into that. I was like, all right. Saca, all right, let's go. Saca la botella, perro. Let's go. Oh. Man, you just, your face lights up when you play, man. Oh, man. Your fucking face lights up. The man. whole room lit up. Oh, man. I, it's so, I, I've been having a lot of fun time. This is, I think, um, music is just so healing for everything. Yes. Without music, I would not be, I would be with my son in fucking wherever he's at. I would not be here. This is the only thing that keeps me sane, not alive, sane. Like, mm. cause, cause you can live, but you could be fucking crazy and just fucking maniacs. Maniacs. Uh, uh, so being sane is is important, cause um, um, that's what you you just you can't just live and just be dead inside. You know what I'm saying? You have to be, you have to be living for a reason. Something that's got to keep you alive and sane. So music is for me. That's medicine. It's everything. You know, everybody. Everybody. You know, they know we. You know, we party. We we throw parties. We we party. Um, you know, not speaking for my friends and I, but just for myself. I love to party because it also it keeps me sane and alive mm. too. You know, but but not like music. Music is just like something that helps your soul it helps you like it helps you just like wake up in the morning and just want to live you know yes. the party is the party cuéntame más ese pinche party when you party, party, when party. You party like that's the difference when you party and you wake up the next day you're like you don't want to live you're like fuck cruda the cruda is hard levanta yeah. muertos bro mm -hmm. quick and easy effective man yeah. So you that, are an experienced that's party that's why um, Mazatlán is you got aguachile in the morning <laughs> Bro, that was the only reason when we went down there. That was the only reason that kind of triggered me to to start a brewery. We were in Mazatlan and I visit Pacifico Brewery. Went in there and I was blown away. Yeah. I was blown away. Came back, started drinking. Went to uh, had mariscos all day. Yeah. You know, just eat, drink. My wifey too. It's a it's a beautiful place. We got down from the cruise ship. Te reciben con pinche banda la verba. It was just amazing, bro. And you get down and it's like, boom, all right, that's what's up. This is what this is what we're getting into. This is what's going on. I'm like, I'm ready. And that all, the rest of the time there was just 110% party level, bro. Wait, I know you I know you said you rebelled against your parents. Do you now like banda or do you still hate banda? No, I I I love banda. <laughs> okay. I, I, I have to I have to love banda because it's part of like my story. It's part of like where I'm from. Yeah. Because um when um I have to, my family's still in Recodo, so when I go to Recodo, it's like banda is that's it's kind of like Chula Vista. Mm -hmm. Um what's Chula Vista? What's like the fucking three punks? Three punks of Chula Vista. Lolitas. For, bro, yeah. Kelly it's like La Banda is is Recodo. Recodo, yeah. wherever you go is is a banda. And um you have to know about the banda. You have to appreciate it. Like to me, I it took it took me like 
after my rebellion, I'm all, fuck. I can't resist. Yo, what am I, doing? I can't resist Julio Preciado. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh. Can't, can't resist. Pancho no. Baraza, los yeah. recoditos. All of the things, bro. Recoditos. Todo el pinche limón. ¿Qué más quieren? All that shit. It's like, and then also when I recorded a record with my dad, I really fucking Ooh, took it to another man, level. Because I saw how, how the records were made, like the, you know, the trombones, las clarinetas, este, um, las trompetas, everything just from scratch. Like, I'm all, oh my God. Now I hear banda different. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I piece, I break it down piece by piece when I listen. I'm like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, you hear that? Oh, you listen to this. I've turned into that dad with my kids. Yeah. Like, I can't listen to that right Is that now. in Mazatlan? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Look at that, man. Damn, no, crazy. ustedes puro pinche y fiesta, güey, no mames. Es que los mazatlecos así somos, no hay que oh fingir las God. cosas. Llamar Damn. las cosas por lo que es. Damn, Mira, puro, smoky, los es... mazatlecos Damn. nacimos Damn. Para, para comer marisco y para pistear. Y, y And that bailar. haircut. <laughs> And that haircut. A <laughs> huevo que sí. A <laughs> huevo que sí. Fuck, I gotta go back. I, I can't go wait. Back, I think we're gonna go for, uh, for carnaval. This yeah? Time. Yeah, for Semana Santa. S I've never, uh, I've been... I heard it's crazy. There's so it's many very people. Crazy. So, but cada pinche pueblo tiene su fiesta, bro. That's it. Cada sí. pueblo tiene su carnaval, todo el pedo. Yeah. It's like yes. Sí, pero el del malecón, o sea, es una, es una, es una pinche fiestota de puta madre. Oh. O sea, son miles y miles y miles de. It's gente. gonna be hard for me, dude, to go to Japan to Mazatlán <laughs> because culture shocks. Otro pedo. Because in Mazatlán, people are like fucking, you know, drinking their beer and they're like, <laughs> fucking throw it on the beach. I'm like, no. Like it, well, not I'm not Mazatlecos, but other people that <laughs> other people that dry that that are there, you know, mucho Tourists. mucho turista nacional, nacional. Yes, like, like man, littering now to me is like I'm conscious of it. Yeah, like I'm, I, it, now it's like I don't want to see no trash, people throwing trash, anything like that. But watching the World Cup, bro, <laughs> who <laughs> Japanese nationals after exactly. every match they were going up and down, fila por fila, recogiendo basura, just yeah, collecting, picking sick. up. They had their own little bags and awesome. gloves. I was like. You know what? We're fucking I, I saw the elim their eliminating game, uh, I think Croatia, mm. when they played, and I was at a bar and they were hyped up, dude. They were serving us tequila because they knew we were Mexicans and they were like, Fool, you were in Japan when they were fucking playing? Yes. <laughs> no, mames, bro. <laughs> so I'm with the Japanese and when they lost the game, I'm not lying, dude. They fucking cried. Like they, they got tear, everyone got teary and they cried, but like right away, they just. They just like when they said like the, the final score, everyone they got together, dude, and they clapped good for That's the, awesome, for the man. opposing Amazing. team, like out of respect. Out of respect, I'm a I'm a fuck Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, fuck Chula Vista. No Chula Vista. Fuck Croatia. I'm from Chula Vista, bro. <laughs> like Chihuahua. The respect. Hey, look at look at Eric. Oh. Hey. Man. Oh, you know? hey. I didn't know you had so much rhythm. Hey, I didn't know you could play the drums horny, bro. You look at playing the bongos <laughs> horny, bro. Look at you. I've never seen a hornier bongo player. That's a horny ass bongo player, bro. Oh, man. Man. It's all, uh, That's cool, man. Look Pare at that. Hey, put that shit again. No. Put that shit again. Watch out, watch out. You know how many people are going to start playing the bongos now? Oh, it's oh, actually, oh, look at oh, oh, it. Oh, oh, it, oh, it, oh, oh, it's a little oh. duck face. Wait, that's at Hong Kong, it's right? A, that's at Hong Kong. It's, it's, a, it's a pucker for me. It's a pucker. No, but in his mind, in his mind, he's not even listening to us. No, bro. He's playing his own shit. He's playing. Hey, wait. Casas. That's the same smile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Hey, um, hey, con las putas. P U T A S. Y te la vas a rifar. Puchando. Y puta. Putas. Te la vas a rifar. Puchando. Las putas. Oh! <laughs> we can do it all oh, night, bro. Man. We got to wrap this up. Man. We ain't got to do shit, song. but we will, fool. Mm. Carlos Baez, fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, man. Anytime uh, you come in here, it's always a fiesta. It's always a party. I, I don't even know what I, I know. I was stressed about some shit when I got here. Really? I'm not stressed about it anymore. Like, for right now, for this last hour. Se te ven los ojos. See, look. 
<laughs> the eyes don't lie, chico. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to fucking yeah. hang out with you, like you, drink with you, listen to you tell stories. This is yeah. gonna be a long ass podcast because oh, I man. just like I just like sitting here watching and listening. Yeah, that's why I brought the guitar. I think the guitar makes it not so boring. I think boring. Yeah. You're not boring. No. You're boring. Only You're boring people boring. get bored, bro. Exactly. Think boring. That was amazing. Thank you for the yeah. treat. Yeah. BJ Jasbera. Anything? Cousin. Anything else that you got to add? I feel like this is like your episode. Nothing. Well, well done, you. BJ. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Paez. Yes. Un gran uh, placer, güey. Nos vemos so pronto, much. compa. Merry guys. Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. And wasting my dinero. Talking about how many ways a woman.